Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the first ever Saved by the Roll campaign. My name is Keegan. I am one half Love Two Gamers, and I guess I am technically your host for this uh, this evening. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to get this started. This has actually probably been, what, two months? Maybe longer in the making? Uh, we've been talking about this for a little while, and we are finally ready to go. Uh, as you can see, to my, technically, my right, but left of me, if I do this way, <laughs> Um, is Cody. How you doing, Cody? Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm, are you excited to get to get rolling in this? No pun intended. Uh, I am extraordinarily excited to get playing. Uh, we've been waiting a while for this. Yeah. Uh, down below Cody there, you have the wonderful looking Bertrand. I'm pretty. Hello, Bertrand. <laughs> He's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Next to the wonderful looking Bertrand is uh, the even prettier uh, Latrine, aka Nate. Uh, sadly, Nate was having connection issues, that's why you can't see him. But uh, how you doing, Nate? But you can hear him. Uh, yeah, you can hear me yeah. hopefully pretty well here. Um, but uh, the video for Roll20 is having fun. Hi. Yes, very much fun. Uh, and then down below Bertrand there is last but not least of our players. It is good old Tim. How you doing tonight, Tim? I'm doing excellent. I'm uh, ready to be the Zach Morris of uh, Half Orcs this evening. <laughs> it's all right, because I'm saved by the roll. And then our Dungeon Master for this lovely, lovely campaign uh, is the wonderful David. You know him from various different streams he's been on with us. Uh, how you doing, David? I'm doing well. I'm excited to get this going. See, hopefully, how, uh, how we do tonight. With One thing I want to say before we get started... I do want to say I am uh, appreciative of all the work you put, you've put into this so far. Yeah. Uh, I know you've put hours and hours of prep. Um, this is my first Dungeons & Dragons campaign ever, uh, so I'm excited to see. No pressure. It's going to be the best <laughs> damn one ever. I've, it's going to be the best one I've ever played. So. Well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not saying much. <laughs> but without further ado, I'm going to let you take it away and uh, bring us into the campaign here. Oh, okay. Um. Just for the folks at home, we're playing a little home brew mixed in with a little five ed edition uh, D and D, uh, and here we go. To say the past year has been uneventful in the Forgotten Realms would seem accurate to the common folk of the cities that populate the realm. However, things are not as they seem. It has been almost a year since the disappearance of the Archmage Morden Canaan, and several champions who had retired after the Great War have also seemed to vanish. Thankfully, there are those who have been charged to pay attention to such things, and in their observations have taken action. Recruiting a new generation of a secret society founded by his missing former teacher, the Archmage Bigby has sent for and inducted a set of unseasoned adventurers with certain skill sets to investigate a matter that seems to be of little consequence to the realm. But as I stated before, things are not as they seem. We begin our adventure with these newly inducted members of the society, named in honor of the former protectors of Cormir, the Purple Dragon have been magically transported to a tavern not far from their intended destination, where they meet for the first time. And so, guys, we open the Wolves of Welton. Woo! And <laughs> we're going to start. Da, da, da. I didn't have the sound effect ready for that. And so what we're going to do <laughs> here is... Uh, like I said, we're going to pick up where you guys left off in our latest, in our uh, last campaign where you appeared magically in this tavern. Uh, two of you, well, none of you have technically met. You've all just arrived, uh, but you all recognize that you, <laughs> that sort of lost expression in each other's faces and the familiar, newly acquired cloak of the purple dragons that you all seem to be wearing. 
And so who would like to uh, start tonight's action and, uh, and begin our, for our adventure? Uh, real quick for clarification, DM. Um, you said everybody's here? You are seeing everyone in the room, although they're not, they haven't spoken yet. Correct. And you said everybody's already wearing their, the cloak? Everyone is wearing their cloak. Okay. That is how you're sort of seeing who's who. Okay. So, and, right. Sorry, last bit of clarification. You said it was Archmage Bigby? Yeah, that's, so that's just setting up. That's... Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Okay. I uh, I jump up on the table with my uh, my ale in hand and go, hey, hey, we made it! How's everybody doing tonight? And I just take back and I just start chugging this thing down and I uh, look around the room to kind of see who's who's all here uh, as I'm doing this. <laughs> so do you want to describe to everyone uh, what they see? Yes, I am a very... Short, portly, powerful, strong, <laughs> handsome, wonderful uh, mountain dwarf. Uh, I have. Did you get all that? I have. Okay, you can explain your long... character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also narcissistic and like new center of attention. We um, can see that. I have. <laughs> I have a. I have a nice big, big mustache that's probably like. 18 inches long it kind of comes down and goes into my beard where i've got a nice like again like 18 24 inch long beard it comes down to like my belly button um i have a scar that goes kind of runs through my left eye um from a battle i had back in the past i'm wearing some very very attractive uh green armor with some uh yellow markings of uh my homeland and my family uh house crest and uh I'm standing on this table trying to be as big as I can in a small world. <laughs> All right, so the rest of you see this crazy armored dwarf jump onto the table and just start uh, just being a dwarf, basically, <laughs> <laughs> joining in with the rest of the party and that's that's going on in the uh, in, at the bar. Just you know, the usual, just drinking and that sort of thing. And let me. I had something for this, but uh, I'm not sure what happened to it. So for now, we'll just uh, we'll just go with uh, ambient sounds until I find it. And then, uh, so that's uh, do do I do I see? So I, I look around and mm. see if I recognize uh, anybody with the cloak on. Obviously, it looks like there's couple people at the table with me so yeah so you, you would still know me yeah you see it you know the tiefling that was in the uh, ceremony with you um mm -hmm. across the across the table and uh mm -hmm. let's i guess let's go with that then uh so, so I, I i i turn to uh to cut to the said tiefling and uh i kind of i kind of grab grab at him trying to pull him up on the table with me uh, to get, like, into the party, to get into the groove of things, and I go, Hey! Uh, come come on, come on, keep going! The drinks are flowing! Next round on me! I glance partially up, but almost eye level. I'm... <laughs> I look right at him. <laughs> yeah, I glance. I immediately I... <laughs> look of just overwhelming frustration goes over me, and you see my face somehow getting redder as <laughs> what you see is a a very blood red tiefling with with uh, a maroon purple hair uh, just past the shoulders, fine fine clothing, almost uh, almost coastal in its quality. Um, I, I hesitate to use the word piratey, but piratey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You'll my my wonderful horns adorned with golden rings on each side, um, and shaped more along the lines of a of a ram. They come kind of go back and around and forward a little bit. Um, and uh, 
I look right up at him. Torbjorn, for the love of all that's holy, would you please get the fuck down? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why should I? It's fun! Torbjorn. Clearly I've been like four or five drinks into this. We have not known each other long enough for me <laughs> to put up with this kind of foolish, <laughs> abhorrent nature. It is my job to get the people to drink, not you. <laughs> I, I look down, I guess, at him, and I just kind of go, okay, and I, I hop back off the table and take a seat next to him. Actually, you're probably about eye level with him. Yeah. When, with, yeah. with you I was going to say, I look, that's why I questioned down. I was like, well, I look down. I, if I'm not mistaken, so. I'm pretty sure I'm not the, the tallest of tieflings. I'm I'm saying I'm four. I'm four foot yeah, two. Yeah, five foot eight or five foot nine or something like that. Uh, but I glance over across the table from me. Well, I see a familiar face, or at least a familiar cloak. Who might you be? Who are you addressing? Uh, whoever's right across from me at the table here. Like okay. I see this between Torbjorn's stumpy KFC legs. So, Tim, as you sort of approach those wandering, uh, those lost looks that have quickly turned to jovial and uh, and drinking with the rest of the uh, <laughs> the crowd, uh, as you approach, the Stiefling addresses you. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, in front of you is a half-orc. Classic greenish gray skin, dark black hair, starting to gray. He looks like he might be uh, middle aged at this point. Definitely weary in the eyes with some scarring. Yeah, he has the cloak that you also wear, and it covers his plate mail. He does not share your jovial looks. On my face is more a look of concern. And I say, friend, I am Kosef. And I believe we have business to attend to. Well, Kosef, it's wonderful to make your acquaintance, eh? I reach out and shake I accept. Hand. Well, let's as get this, to business, as this eh? Is, as this exchange goes on, I, I reach across the table and go, Hey, drinks on me! I give... Kosef a, a, a pint or whatever, a glass of whatever the hell they're called. Okay. Tankard, that's what As I'm looking for. As raises his glass, he looks towards the front of the uh, the uh, tavern where, you know, people enter and, and exit and notices a small gnome. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you would, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. So I, I walk over to uh, to the folks with all the other uh, cloaks, and uh, my name's Welly. How are you doing? I uh, I see that we all share a a certain item. Uh, I my character is uh, all but three two, uh, wearing dark gray hide, uh, short black hair, and gray skin, and I tap on the on the the table trying to get their attention since I'm so small. Well, hello, Willie. How you doing today, huh? Hey, oh. Torbjorn. She, yeah. She's your size. <laughs> hey. I, I turn around to find the uh, the bartender. Hey, barkeep! Uh, as you turn to one the barkeep. One short one. Uh, and, and as almost as if time with that joke. Uh, in walks a, 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 it's another similarly dressed uh, you're a uh, half elf or you're a, a full elf correct I'm a Nate? full elf wood elf you see a wood elf walk in uh, in the similar cloak uh, and a holy symbol around her neck one that you recognize Kosef as being the same as yours. And uh, Nate, if you would, go ahead and introduce yourself to the group. 
as I look over, I just shake my head whenever I look at Torbjorn. <laughs> They'll say we all. Mm -hmm. uh, and I walk over and introduce myself. Hello! I am Ara, but I go by La Train. Hey, uh, Ara, La Train, like, like, as in, like, a toilet? Yeah. I'm not worth Can much. Can I? <laughs> I freaking... <laughs> I'm sorry. Ara, what was it? Ara La Train, but people just call me La Train. I prefer to call you Ara. <laughs> and describe what you look like to the uh, to the party. Um, uh, I'm a wood elf. Um, very very young wood elf. Not not really matured. Um, blonde hair, blue eyed. About uh, four foot six, so I'm much much taller than Torbjorn and uh, Welly. Um. Uh, I am a cleric, um, and, uh, yeah. I, uh, I walk up to Latrine and, uh, put my arm around her, and, uh, again, because I'm giving out alcohol to everybody at this point, because why not? We're celebrating. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Latrine! On me! And I give, give Latrine a, a tankard as well to join, as she joins the table. Okay. The barkeep, having, you know, been summoned, <laughs> walks over and he's like looking at all of you and uh, says, well, you're a motley crew, aren't you? What can I get the rest of you? Just your basic ale, sir. Thank you very much for me. Coming up. Me. I'll not be drinking this evening. Oh, come on, party pooper. That's Latrine's job. Go, sir. <laughs> Would you like some goat's milk? Now that you mention it, yes. Yes, I would. I'll <laughs> keep goat's milk on me for this man. Thank you, sir. Anytime. All right, so he takes your orders and goes back uh, and collects his collects your drinks. As Upon his return, he... Uh, delivers them and mentions that uh, he has accommodations for you for the evening uh, that were pay paid ahead of time. Oh Damnedest thing, I didn't think you were all real. I thought someone was putting me on. Said a bunch, bunch of you lot were going to come in here, going to need a night's rest, and paid for your rooms accordingly. Fine by me. Can't complain about that now, can you, boys? And ladies. Oh, ladies. <sighs> it's good to be around the company of women. Could you okay. describe uh, this uh, individual barkeep? You, you want me to describe the barkeep? No, no, the person the who person made the oh, the <laughs> Sorry. I th sorry, sorry, I misunderstood you. Yes. Well, he was uh, one of them mages, it looked like, you know, fellow in the fancy robes like you fellas, kept his hood up, hard to see, looked elvish if you ask me, but, you know, no one ever asked me. Till tonight. Till tonight, yes. Oh, that reminds me. Got some, uh... Left me something for you. Uh, then he digs around in his apron. Shit. Uh, must have left it at the bar. Be right back. And he saunters off. I, uh, I, just, I turn to the, the whole crew at the table and, you know, just kind of swing my glass lazily and there's ale flying out of it and all this kind of stuff. And I go, uh, so, uh... What brings y'all here? How'd you guys uh, get the cloak? I don't know why my voice keeps changing. Get back to me. Puberty. <laughs> but it does. Puberty. Yes, puberty. <laughs> Her. Uh, but yeah, I, I turn and I drag. Where, how'd you want to get your cloak? Well, 
L allow me to I know how update you, our I know new how members. <laughs> Gosif, Welling, Ella. Ella? Ella. Ara. Yeah, Ella. <laughs> Ara. Um, I've been working here at the, uh, this establishment for, for a few weeks now. And I've had, uh, had some time to get to know our good man Torbjorn here. And hey. Torbjorn, you see, is... Well, he's a treat, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but we've been here a while. And, uh... Torbjorn, how long have you been here in town, huh? I, uh, I don't know, a uh, couple, couple days, been hanging out, um, you know, just kind of sightseeing, to explore the world, you know, don't, yeah, couple, couple days. It's been good. Kosef, what, what uh, brought you here, besides the obvious, <sighs> Well... I was simply following my own path. Not a path that I laid before myself, but one that Seren Ray has set out before me. And I found myself in the company of a strange man who, as he prayed, I, I joined him and he, he gave me this cloak and he sent me here, but uh, told me a little of the nature of this organization, but left me completely unprepared for you, so I apologize at my surprise. If you don't mind, my friend, uh, just for the sake of safety, would you mind uh, if I came around your back and looked at the top of the cloak, if you catch my meaning? I will choose to trust you in this. Thank you. I walk behind him, peek back the edge okay. of his cloak, look for the marking. You find the the arcane glow of the purple dragon symbol. I reach around, pat him on the cheek, be like, "Can never be too safe, Kosif. Can never be too safe." And this we agree. <laughs> like, go back to my seat. As you as you uh, leave, the the symbol that you saw fades, so it's no longer present. Uh, and uh, upon that, also the uh, the barkeep comes back. He's also the tavern owner, and uh, hands you the a hands you a piece of paper, and he says, "I apologize. I must have misplaced it. It's just this blank piece of paper. It seems." I'll hand it he places here, it on the table. Uh, so he hands it to Cain. Alright. You say it had something written on it, sir? So as you look at it, Cain, you yeah. do see writing. Okay. Oh, no worries. No worries. You got our drinks yet, sir? You got our drinks, sir? Yeah, he had already delivered. Oh, drinks. okay. I must have missed that. Uh, what do I owe you? One more round for everyone. It's, it seems your tab's been paid for the, for the evening as well. <laughs> Torbjorn, take it easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, my kind of people. <laughs> I'm, I'm at this point, like, slumped over on the table, just barely alive, just raise my hand up, head on head down, just realizing I've, I've hit the point of no return. It's going to be oh, a long night. <laughs> I just pat him on the back and... Look at the rest of them and be like, who's bunking with Torby tonight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you seem to know him best. <laughs> Doesn't mean I, I like him the best. <laughs> um, and so this piece of paper, is this the, the handout that I have? No. Oh. So this okay. one, oh, okay. this is a... Uh, so as you as you look at it and the the words seem to fade in, uh, and appear uh, as, you, as you gaze upon the page, uh, it... it it says, uh, Dearest new members, my apologies, or I cannot be there in person. I have 
made accommodations for you for the evening and paid your tab for the at the bar food and drink will be provided for by me for the evening in the morning uh your horses uh which have been stabled if you have horses uh and the journey to welton is but half a day I, uh, I turn to the, the barkeep and just go, uh, So, uh, where is this room at? I need to go pass out. I'm, uh, I think I've hit my limit. Alright, so, bar- the barkeep kind of claps his hands and a couple of the, the locals, uh, kind of grab you and, uh, kind of hoist you <laughs> up to your room. You each have uh, your just, own room for the evening as well. I Can picture, I, I picture me, like, with my arms like this, and then just grabbing behind me and just carrying me up the stairs <laughs> as I go. All right. This Ladies, whole time, I'm just... Ladies, I'm just gentlemen, like a... shall see you in the morning for our first adventure, no? Huh? Good night. I bow. Walk away. All right. The uh, the uh, barkeep comes back with keys for each of you, and uh, you know gives you lets you know that the the room number is on the t- on the key, and that all rooms are upstairs, which he guides you if you need. Does anyone want to do anything before they uh, before a night's rest? I don't think I'm able to. <laughs> <laughs> All I, right. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll go down and because I had been contracted here for the evening, I will perform for another hour before I until until I see the crowd disperse. Let's just say that. Okay. I'll earn my keep. All right. Anyone else? I'll order some okay. food. Okay. And, uh, watch the show for a bit before I uh, head on up myself. All right. I'm just going to head right up. All right. After a morning's rest and a trip to the stables, you find that uh, there are three horses uh, for available for travel. I uh, clearly hung over. Come out. Are we? Are we all together outside of the stables then? Yep. Okay. So I come out clearly hung over and just go. Oi! It's been a long night. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. Sorry about last night, guys. I got a little little carried away. Um, uh, my apologies. It's fine, Torbjorn. I've seen you much worse in your few days here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got three horses. <laughs> We've got a few wee ones. I don't think they'll mind riding together, huh? What do you think, Welly and Ella? Latrine. Hmm. I uh I would I would prefer to, to, to go with Latrine, uh just to make sure uh no one gets handsy. <laughs> the stable boy brings out you know, leads out the horses for you. And uh, and he kind of looks at Kosef curiously and kind of says, "My apologies. I was told you had a horse." Easy mistake. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I'm taller than the rest, and I have long strides, so I shall endure this and take it as a lesson. I can. It, I don't believe Torbjorn's in any state to to be riding <laughs> alone. Toby, are oh, you still a bit uh, inebriated, my little man? Oh, I guess I. Yeah, you, you you could say that. I uh um, I, I'll be good in a couple hours. All right, all right. I, how? 
Uh, so, question of these horses, there's a couple, a couple smaller ones. Or are the horse? I assume all the horses are full size. Yeah, they're full size. Uh, one is brown. How? One is uh, white and uh, with brown spots, and another one is a uh, black, all black horse. Ooh, black one. I, I, sh- I uh, stride right over. I was going to say, I go shuffling over to the white one and try and hop up on it, but clearly I can't get up there, and I, I turn around to see if somebody can help me up on this horse. <laughs> I'm just you, jumping up and down, <laughs> trying to get up, uh, struggling. Make a dexterity uh, check for me. Uh, first roll of the game! There we go. Be good, please. Yeah. Uh, hey, okay, so, so you are able to get up on the horse. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> as hungover as you are. <laughs> I get up there and I, and I just kind of like laid out on the horse, just belly first, holding on to the reins. I, uh, I whisper into the black horse's ear. I'm like, is it boy or girl? Male, male or female horse? The black is male. Okay. Uh, my good steed, what is your name? What is your name? You are beautiful. And I to pet him and I uh, reach into my my bag and find a little bit of a little bit of oats or something. You know, I reach into his feed bag. I'm sure he's got one near him and try to hand feed him. See if he takes to me. The stable he does. Okay. And the stable voice uh, hears overhears you and and says, "We call him Thunder." Oh. Thunder, my boy, you and I are going to be good friends. I hop up on Thunder, and I ride over to the side of Torbjorn, looking like a smurf trying to jump up on top of a mushroom. (laughs) Reach my hand down and offer him a hoist up right behind me. That way, Kosif, being the size that he is, has his own horse. Kosif. So I'm behind. Wait, I hop on the horse. You're behind me, or I'm behind you. You're you're, you're behind me. <laughs> okay, so I've then put my arms Take around you, and just spin. you know, yeah, back, back, yeah, back back seat, just holding on for dear Dude, life. We're, we're uh, going nuts just... from nuts to butts here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. bareback. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, I I'll get on the. the... <laughs> A free horse then and <laughs> it's now vacant. So which yeah, one are you getting? The, He's getting on the white the one. The white one? Yeah, yeah. The, stable like the, boys. the white one to the black one. The stable boys. That one's called peppermint. Peppermint. Good name for a horse. Ah right, uh, good name for a candy as well. The last thing you need, Toby. It's the last thing. <laughs> Willie, Ella, I, I, are you set to ride? Closer. Time. I look over at Latrine and I, I give a, a a firm nod and and gesture to the horse and make my way over there and hop up. As you hop on, hop on the stable boy says, Chance, you be a good boy now. Uh, Chance was the brown, was brown with white spots? Correct. Cool. Gotta keep my horses straight. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, so, uh, so you guys comfortable with that? That'd be half a day to Welton. Cool. At what kind of pace? uh, yeah, what do we? What do we? What kind of environment are we in? Are we in a? Are we going through woodlands? Is it open so, yeah. field? Yep. So as we travel, we're going through uh, the, to the town of Welton. Now Welton is on a mountain. It's uh, you guys are on a mountain, and basically you're going to be heading uh, half a day down this mountain, sort of around and into the neighboring peak, and then down the valley valley uh and then uh to the uh, west side of the river is where welton is so you guys will be traveling down uh there's it's basically there's a road that winds through that's been made because welton is 
a uh, very prominent uh, town for trade. And uh, is is Welton it, which compass direction are we heading? South. It is west, to the east. You're going to be heading east. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Welton is. Let's see here. It sits on the bank of a slow-moving river, the gentle hills rising up on each side, and the houses and shops are generally made of oak, painted bright white, and have elaborate carvings worked in the eaves. Wheat and sheep farming are the local economy, and people pay much more attention to the weather and wool prices than rumors of distant wars or disasters. It's a picturesque halfling town uh, with... uh, humans coexisting but for the most part it's a halfling town and a handful of dwarves uh it's not a rich village but uh it you can tell that it does very well uh in trade that is until recently um, and uh, before we before we get there, I actually changed out of my armor and put on my common clothes. Okay. So I'm wearing just I'm just wearing just my common clothes. All right. So, uh, on your travel, uh, as just as you're nearing about say half hour outside of Welton, uh, we are gonna roll initiative. What? Shouldn't have taken your armor. Uh, yeah, I screwed that one up. I want to take my armor uh, classes now. As you approach, you see a uh, small uh, flock of sheep being shepherded by two humans. And suddenly, uh, out of nowhere, you hear howls. And the wolf howls of uh, uh, are pre- uh, preceded by an attack. And suddenly, wolves are upon them, upon them. All right. So, damn, I've rolled well, and I still can't beat y'all. I need to actually move this. It's okay, Torb. To, yeah. Uh, I just want to point out that Blue in the chat called me uh, Kermit's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> It's not wrong. It's not. Oh, God. I, I would just like to point out that, Toby, you're not supposed to drink in your armor. You're supposed to drink <laughs> in your normal clothes and go adventuring in your armor. You half witted, half size dipshit. I, uh... Just like a dwarf always ready for a fight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. Now that mm-hmm. we're into it, Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. what? Uh, it looks like it's uh, <laughs> N- Nate. You're up first. On a train. Oh, how many of these are there? Okay. There's uh, what three enemies? It looks like guys. No, there's one, oh, two, three, four. You see oh, six. Oh, five, six. Four. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, make a uh, perception check for me. Perception. Let me get used to this. Uh, while we're doing this, I have a question. That's just from a logistic standpoint. Since I took my armor off, is putting armor back on an action or a bonus action? Send me an action. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure. <laughs> so perception is just uh, um, wisdom, right? Well, if you look under skills... Yeah, under skills, you should see perception. You should see perception. You're going to want to click that one. (laughs) Yeah. Damn it. Sorry, guys. on the left-hand side, the first column. I'm looking for it, but I am not seeing it. Uh, Speed. Where is that? It's on the left-hand side, right next to your... So, right next to... Wisdom, intelligence... So yep, next, right, to, the, look next the, to charisma, in the box next to where uh, charisma is. You'll see medicine, nature, oh, perception. Okay, there you go. 
Oh, damn. 24. Okay. 19. Ooh, so, cool. uh, something you notice about these wolves is that they're not acting like wolves you've, you've encountered before. They are attacking with precision, tactically. They're trying to move in and out and get food and, and get out. Um. Wow, I didn't expect to go first here. This is not good. Um. <laughs> so I'm going to move. You can do nothing. That is an option as well. If you don't know. What well, you want I want to stay in a group for one thing. So, um, I want to put my back. So I'm going to move right to there. Uh, which is within my movement, because each, I'm assuming each block is, uh, is that 10 feet? Like, it's five. If you hold Q down and, and move, you can see what the, uh, each block is five. Five, okay. So I'm going to move just uh, 20 feet here, which is okay. a movement of 35. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to hold fast. And I yell out, We need to stay together. They're moving in a pack. Okay. And that's. Is that. Done. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Looks like Kane, you're up. I'm going to go ahead and move forward my. What do I have? 30? Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to move up just half my movement. Just going to step uh, 10, 20, 20 feet. So about 20 feet right there. I'm going to hold my action for... So I don't think... I don't know. I totally can. Uh, I'm going to take a shot straight down the row here with my short bow. That's the first wolf I see. Okay. Yeah, where is it? Short bow. Just click on it. Which one are you going for? Uh, where's my little ping? This guy. That one. There. Okay. Okay, and you rolled an eight. Correct. No, oh, fourteen. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen hits. Roll damage. Seven points of piercing. Ooh, nice. Okay. And then I'm gonna right. back up five feet, and that'll be my turn. Okay. Looks like uh, Welly, you're up next. All right, so I want to do to do to do. do Ooh, hey, uh, I'm going to move my full turn to get right there, and then do to do to do, do. I want to, so I believe, because I just need 130 feet. I want to try to hit uh, this one with a uh, with a and crossbow bolt. Nice. And that is... Uh, crap, what do I roll for that? I'm sorry. So just click on the hand crossbow bolt okay. under your... There we go. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so that oh, hits. Wow. Roll, roll damage by clicking hand crossbow. Just click it in the chat, and it'll give you damage. No, if you just... Oh, sorry. Um, in the first one, under yeah, 20. There you go. There you go. Seven, there you go. Okay. Okay, so you you killed that. Well, that okay. Uh, it is now... All right, and that's, that's the end of my turn. Okay. 
They may be organized, <laughs> but they're still weak. Upon seeing this, the, the <laughs> one of the wolves stops and makes a noise you you can't quite make out, but it gets the rest of the wolves' attention and they begin retreating. So, first wolf is going to take its full movement and dash away. So me then. Okay, so that is one wolf. And that takes us to... Should be, yeah, it's me. Uh, I put my chest plate back on because I'm a dum-dum <laughs> and uh, took it off. I think we would be in town. So here's a question: Is armor? Is it one action per armor? Or is it all? Can I put all my armor on it? One like because I, I took my shield, I put it away. So my yeah, it's gonna take, take you a few turns away. to get everything on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I put I put my my chest plate back on. Okay. Um, I did not put my sword away. My sword was still out. I just took okay. the armor itself off. Um, and then I I'm just gonna move. A little bit closer with the group here, just you know, so we can all stay together. And I am just in a <coughs> hold position, kind of defensive position, I guess, waiting for to see if if something comes near us. I'm gonna be ready to strike. Okay. And so. And that's my turn. All right. So wolf one, wolf one is taking its cue from the leader, and uh, taking its full movement into the brush and leaving the battle area. Wolf 3 is also going to disengage and get with a double dash right to the edge. Wolf 2, same thing. They're trying to get, leave, guys. I scared them so, up. So there's three I still in going to be still in range by the uh, looks I like. see him running away uh, I yell you fuckers run away <laughs> <laughs> waving my sword <laughs> you know trying to be tough but I'm really not okay so that ends the this combat turn oh hang so on a second oh wait did you are you where yeah you, you skipped right you? over me there. did I skip you oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm right after Torbjorn Sorry, this thing is not easy to read. It's okay. Let's, there you are. Okay. Because, yeah, like, I don't know why there's so many, why you guys are in there so much. I'm going to clear that out, and we'll start fresh next time. But, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Ghost of, did, what it, uh, I did didn't you see really, their retreat? Yeah, I didn't really have much I could do there. I'm going to rush up to here. Try to get close to one of these shepherds to make sure that they're okay in case the wolves come back. Uh, but I'll hold my action there for any unseen okay. additional attacks. All right. Yeah, sorry about that. It's all right. Uh, and then for some reason, I've got... Uh, let me get these guys. Our initiative looks fine to me. I had yeah. I had you guys in there like two or three times. It was it was weird. Wow. Weird. So I, when I went when I went down, I I went to the one that was below because I was scrolling. So I went to the when. Anyway. Uh. So yeah, they're retreating, basically, and. Uh, it takes us up to, Ara again. Okay, they're retreating. Let's see how. I think that's out of my range, though. Um, I'm gonna tap. Uh, is it kind? Uh, Bertrand, how do I pronounce your um your character's name again? Kaim. Yeah, Kaim. Okay. Uh. <laughs> and I'm gonna sorry, 
<laughs> um, I'm, I'm can, gonna we, can we not roll when we're not playing either? Because we've got rolls in here that I don't know if that's an iPad delay or what. But sorry, go ahead, Nate. What the heck? Oh, that, sorry, that just went kind of crazy. Um, I'm gonna tap uh, Kaim and uh, use a spell guidance to assist him in whatever his next next task would be. Okay. You, you you do perceive that they are retreating. The wolves mm -hmm. are retreating. Well, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm doing that with for Kyan. Right. Okay. So you cast guidance on on uh, Kyan. Is that it? Is that your turn? Um, well, I can't shoot them from here. Uh, I think I'm going to go... I'm going to rush up, um, staying out of the way. So 35 feet. I'm going to go right to there. I'm going to try to stay out of the way by going right here. Okay. Okay. And done. Okay. And that takes us to Bertrand. Uh, I'd like to believe that uh, I can use my bonus action to dash, correct? That would take your full movement, yeah. Okay. So, how much does dash give me extra? Your, it would be your full, double your movement. Double. So, okay. 30, 45, 40, 45, 50, 50, 60. Uh, but then I don't, that only leaves your action. Yep. I don't think I've got enough. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to try it. Ah, where'd it go? Yeah. Well, here. And I'm within disadvantage range, I think. That's what I was trying to... When I clicked on the... the the short bow, 30, 80. So that, am I within non-disadvantage? I am. <laughs> Go for that wolf right there. This this guy, come on. You just click and hold and it should, okay. Okay, yeah, that one. Okay. All right. So what that's... Total 11, that's a miss. What did his thing give me that he cast on me? Guidance. Uh, Nate, can you... Yeah, I'm going to pull that up here for you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, give me a second. I'll... That's new to me. I it believe on it... Hold on, I got it. Okay. So, uh, you get a, you can add a D4 if you want. So that I can add it to that roll. It's one ability. Oh, it's an ability check. So not a attack roll. All right. Before or after making the ability check. I would say that's. If you wanted to do that, you could. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Okay, so that, that is that does a hit, that does make it hit. Sweet. So roll damage. Seven piercing, okay. Y'all are some bloodthirsty people. <laughs> hey man, they're attacking poor sheep. These poor they're farmers. retreating. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so came. All right, Will, uh, Welly, you're up. All right, but I'm gonna move right. Ciao. And then I think I'm just in, I think I'm just in range for this one. It's kind of maxed out. Yeah, that's a, that would be rolling at disadvantage, correct? Because it's so correct. far away. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I'm going to try to hit 
this pupper. Okay. Let's click on that. All right. And then hand crossbow. Oh. Nope. At disadvantage, that's a miss. All right. Uh, and uh, I hold. Okay. Torbjorn, you up? Uh, I equip my uh, my next piece. <laughs> put that, put that back on. <laughs> okay. Is there and, anything uh, else you want to do? <laughs> I don't move anywhere. I just equip my next piece and call it a day. Okay. <laughs> so tell me again, Toby, what is it that you do exactly? <laughs> do you just dress and undress? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the cost of your turn. Alrighty. I'm gonna move here next to this. Sheep herder. Okay. And uh, and uh, just hold my position. And, uh, okay. Wait you see, he's, vis- he's visibly shaken. He, uh. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm going. I'm going to say to him, "Be calm, friend. It looks like they are retreating. This will be over shortly." Okay. Anything else you want to do? Uh, no, just hold, uh, hold my action. If, uh, uh, if anything, uh, be prepared if anything comes at me. Okay. So that takes us back to them and they are indeed going to retreat and exit the area. Uh, so they're going to try and run and vanish into the woods. Mm. And that is going to. Cowards. And, and combat. Uh, so we'll, we'll be out of initiative, but if you want to try and shoot at them in the wood, you'll, you know, they'll be covered. So yeah, you, it'll be at again. disadvantage. I'm just happy I got my clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> that was all me, guys. I we did it. look off into the woods and curse under my breath in Infernal. <laughs> Gentlemen oh. and ladies, we were brought here for a reason. So, uh, as as they disperse and everything uh, starts to calm down, you see the, the shepherds are all sort of, you know, trying to calm down, and they had been trying to fend them off with what little they had, sticks and whatnot. Uh, the first, <laughs> first uh, one's a halfling named Perrin, and... Uh, he comes up, he says, Oh, thank you so much for your assistance. Well, he just came out of nowhere. These wolves have been driving us crazy the well, last few few months. We've heard. Perrin, you've, is it right? You've you've heard. Yes, we've been uh, we've been sent. We found uh, well, your your own mayor of Welton, Tillis. Tillis Marion has sent us, eh? Or, well, has called for us. I shouldn't say he sent us, but we saw well, wolves, new. and we think old. Well, it's news to me, but I'm I'm sure glad someone's here to do something about this. I mean, this is... of course, this all started when that sorcerer, Father Erickson's brother, up and disappeared. Now that I'd hear a word against him, but of course, makes it makes you think, don't it? Father Berrickson, you say? Merrickson. Merrickson. Merricks. And this this father was a wizard, or his brother was? Well, his brother. His brother. He, he was a sorcerer, Alexei. He, he was the village protector until a few months ago. He up and disappeared, and then we started having this trouble with these wolves. And then uh, Garrett the other one that you had come up to, he's finally calmed down and hearing uh, Perrin going off about about it, he's like, he, he joins in. He's like, first, 
first sign something out of the usual was going on came when the Petersons up on Sporex Hill had a dozen, sneep, a dozen sheep snatched from inside a barn. Their boy got thrashed something awful for failing to close it, but a week later the exact same thing happened, even though Peterson had locked it up himself. And, uh, Dale, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Cade, the other one joins, and, and, and just, like, it just starts this whole thing about, let me tell you all about these wolves and all the shit we're having trouble with. <laughs> and this Wheatley, who sells pots, pans, and ointments here about, was chased off in his cart by a pack of wolves, says they appeared from the trees as if by magic. When he went back from him with some village lads, the horses were gone, and so were three, see, three sacks of thick leather he planned to trade. What kind of leather? Leather. <laughs> well, there's leather, many, leather. Ty- there's many like, types of leather. Like thick, thick leather, boy. <laughs> you got What's cotton it? in your ears. I said thick leather. Apparently, I got leather in my ears. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking leather. It's just leather. Put the rest of your fucking armor on, eh? <laughs> you see me in the corner like, buckling up everything. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you're here doing something about this. I highly recommend seeing uh, the mayor over at the Shepherd's cro- Crook probably about now. You say he'll be at the Shepherd's Crook? That's just if today's Tuesday, which, yes, yeah, right, yes. They have a weekly uh, council meeting. He should be starting there in about an hour. So if you head there, you'd probably see him pretty soon. How far up from Welton are we? Oh, Welton's just, you know, about 15 minutes that way. Perfect. Have you guys been attacked before by these wolves? What? Haven't you just heard all the stories I've been telling you? They've been <laughs> you, terrorizing us for three you, months. You personally. Me personally? Just, just now? Just now they came out? Terrorizing. <coughs> it's an epidemic with these wolves. Jesus. Fucking halflings. <laughs> I I turned the time and just smack him across the face. <laughs> you motherfucker! You just got attacked in the world! <laughs> oh, first with the leather and now with the attack by wolves. I'm just putting my armor on over here. <laughs> uh, we'll be on our way. You, you fellas take care, huh? Hi, you two, and best of luck in catching these wolves. Devil behind them, I have you ask me. Hmm. Okay. You don't say. I want to search that wolf that we killed. Okay. Can I also take a look at it? Yeah. And Make- see if there's anything funky about it? Because he's. Okay. You said they made a weird noise. So, uh... What do I need to roll, David, I guess? So, well, I want one of you to roll an investigation, and I guess with Torbjorn helping you, just do it at advantage. <laughs> okay, so advantage... Investigation... Fifteen. Uh, what? 11-15? Fifteen. Yeah, you take the you take the higher yeah. one because it's a advantage. Exactly. So a, a fifteen. Okay. So there's nothing uh, at first glance that is uh, unusual about the wolf, but with a fifteen, you look a little closer, and you find that uh, it seems a little bit more cared for than than uh, your normal wild wolf, uh, like like maybe. A, a, it's paid more attention to grooming than than a normal uh, wolf would. Hmm. And, and no markings, uh, cloth, or anything like that? Uh, it does seem to have uh, around its joints um, signs that it has worn, like there has been cloth tied around, but uh, not at the moment. Hmm. I, uh... I, I, I don't know if I want to do this. If I'm gonna do it, 
I cut into the skin where the cloth looks like it is. Is like is the cloth big enough to like have a sample of it? There, if I cut it out. There's no cloth. There's just like markings where it looks. So you like can see like like into indent- indentations. Like cl- like, like it's cleaner. Mind. Like you know like yeah. how something is yeah. sun faded, but then you can see that yep. something has been protected by it. It has signs that it's worn protection at some point. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That doesn't bode well. I mean... That doesn't bode well for Torbjorn <laughs> and his armor! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when we search, All right. search the body, so there's, there's nothing... It's, just, it's a wolf. There's nothing on there's it. It's just a wolf. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Uh, can so can I can I use can I eat the wolf meat? <laughs> oh my God. Like can I chop its leg off and take the wolf leg with me? Like you, okay. I mean, you want to chop it up and picture like, slaughter it? Picture, picture like a, what you're saying? like a chicken leg. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh. gonna cut like shoulder of one leg. Okay. off no. and then cut it off with the paw, so it's just the arm, not the not the paw or the anything above the shoulder. Okay. And put it in, and put it in my bag. What about the leather? I turn to the group. I turn to the group. It's seconds for later. <laughs> okay. Anyone want to do anything else before? How do I add a wolf to my bag? <laughs> just how do I classify that as just like a wolf just arm? Wolf. wolf leg, maybe. <laughs> wolf leg. Meat. Wolf meat, and I'm gonna put in parentheses leg, so I know what specifically it is. I can't type that. Let's try that again. Uh, is there anything else around in this field that would give any signs of kind of where they came from or anything like I assume they didn't leave any sort of trace behind when they ran away other than their footprints um you mean like can you track them and see well is there anything anything that like again it looks like a normal wolf but out, outside mm-hmm. of the ordinary when it comes to stuff in the area, not necessarily the wolf itself that's lying in front of us. Is, is there any sort of sign around the area that it's like, that it has something else going on or now? No, nothing in, around the area that would indicate. Cool. Okay. I'm trying to think what I was, I can't put in words what I'm trying to think, what I'm trying to say, but yes, that's fine. Cool. Hmm. Okay. Like th- I guess the word about what I was trying to say is there's no signs that it has an owner or anything nearby. Like there's nothing other than the. Well, do you want to make another something. investigation check and see? Yeah, my investigation is negative one. <laughs> so no. Still check. Okay. No. You yeah. Could get a natural twenty. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. Uh. Ah. Oh, hey. That's not bad at all. No, there's nothing that indicates. <laughs> <laughs> What if I got a natural twenty? <laughs> but you didn't. There definitely fucking is anything there. Yeah. Good roll, Kermit. <laughs> I walk back over to uh, the Thunder. Calm his nerves. Does he seem? Does Thunder seem rattled by that at all? Nope. Damn good Thunder's horses. Thunder's calm. Damn good horses. All of them are calm, actually. Strangely. They have seen some shit. I hop on. That's right. I, okay. uh, I join him and put my hand up for him to help me on with him. Okay. Uh, Cause I, can't I, uh, I assume we're headed to this, is it the Shepherd's Crook? To learn more about what's been going on with these wolves? Aye. Yes, let's go. Let's, uh, we got we got to make haste, though, because he's uh, 15 minutes away. And uh, we got, it starts in an hour, so we should get going. Yeah. And let's ride. Okay, so you guys are going to head yeah. to the Shepherd's Crook? We ride to Welton. Yes. Okay, what's your, uh, what's your marching order? Uh, now that I'm fully armored, I'll be... Well, I guess I'm riding horse. Hey, Bertrand, so I'll let Bertrand decide. If we're 15 minutes away, Bertrand. there's no 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 need to, to be hasty. I, uh, I'll, and I'll take the lead. That's uh, my comfort zone. 
Uh, I'll take the rear in case those wolves come back out of the woods. I'll I'll hop off the horse and trot between. Trot alongside Willie and Ella. Okay. I feel, I feel like we're raising the bar <laughs> with our heights. <laughs> I'm staying on the horse. <laughs> yeah, but so you, guys, you guys get to the the uh, the crook after about twenty minutes, and uh, uh, you're outside. What? How? Uh, what's your order coming in? I got the rear. I'll take so, the front. So we've been okay. Kosif, uh followed by me, then whatever order it is from them. Uh, so, Ara Welly or Welly Ara? Let's do Welly Ara. that everybody? All right. So as you enter the town, it's a little bit more somber. Uh, it it looks very well off. Everything. Uh, as I said before, is it's a well to do well to do town, but you see sort of a desperation in people's eyes that uh, you wouldn't have seen a few months ago. They're starting to look a little haggard, a little worried. Uh, uh, like the common uh, the common trade here is from you know fleecing and 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 meat from the the sheep, but uh, these wolves have made a serious impact in their business. And uh, so as you arrive into the uh, Shepherd's Crook, uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, I want to kind of, I want to look around and just see who's who's all in here. If there's uh, kind of just kind of what the crowd that like the atmosphere of the room is right now. You said it's somber, but is there like uh, is it somber because of the attacks or is it somber because of I just want to get the feel the vibe of the room like people are drinking. Uh, and trying to cheer up, but it's you can tell that it's a lot. Uh, the big reason is that it is um, because it's they're having tough times. They're drinking to forget, not to not to uh, uh, celebrate. Gotcha. Do I see uh, anyone of importance? Anyone who could look like the mayor or the so, mayor's assistant? As you walk in. Uh, you see that there is a back room that seems to be uh, sort of uh, curtained off, uh, but you're greeted immediately by uh, Lenora Slatebeard, who is the uh, owner and proprietor of Crooked Shepherd. This is what. Welcome to the Crooked, uh, the Crooked Shepherd. What, what can I get you? Well, my good sir, we are. Uh... Ladora, so I'm a lady. Oh. <laughs> I didn't hear the name. <laughs> Bertrand did not hear the name. But I, <laughs> being the charming gentleman that he is, would not have made such a stupid fuck up. Well, here she is. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, all I saw was two dudes sitting next to me. So, <laughs> um, my my sweet dear, we are here to uh, to see Tillis. I believe his name was your your, your great mayor here of Wellington. Welton. You're a strange bunch coming in here asking to see the mayor. We are, but I hand what her. What business the, have you with? I just hand her the the hunter's wanted poster and be like, "We came with great haste. They asked for urgency." Here she looks are. blank. She looks at you blankly and confused. She hands back the paper and she says, "I don't have time for jokes, ma- mate." Well, my dear lady, we've heard that you've had problems with the wolves. Oh, we- you hear about wolves? Well, why no. didn't you say so? Instead of handing me blank pieces of paper, no one can read. Shit, I forgot I was blank. <laughs> So the, the Hunter's Wanted page that we have is blank? It's not blank to you. Yes. No, yeah. Oh. We can see it, but nobody else can. The the one that's a letter from Tillis Marion? As you've now discovered, she cannot read it. 
Oh. Oh, shit. Okay. Very interesting. Never mind. I'll be like, well, you know, I've, I've heard stories about your people and your great sense of humor. I was just having a bit of fun. She says to you, Devil One, I don't like you. Let me talk to someone else. <laughs> I, uh, I, I make my way to the front of the oh, line no. and I go, Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to stand in front of yeah. Torbjorn. I look at her straight dead in the eyes and I say, You earned this. <laughs> I just go, I just go. You see here, we're going to see this mayor of yours if you want to or not. And I, I kind of get a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive. I try to puff my chest out and make myself as big as I can as a four foot two short man can. She looks at you and notices the shield on your, uh, the crest on your uh, armor that you've just recently re-equipped, uh, <laughs> re-robed. I know that symbol. I've got All right, do you? casks of that behind me bar. Are you Vanderstooch? Yeah, Torbjorn Vanderstooch is what my uh, my dad called me. Well, I'm a slight beard. Nice to meet you. Uh, oh, one door I come in to and another. Starts. She gives you a hearty hug. I come in and give her a hug. <laughs> Pat her on the back. This and one. I turned to, I turned to, she turns to you. Like, this one I like. <laughs> <laughs> I turn to Kaim and I go, You see, sometimes it pays off to be, uh, you know, me. I slip a gold <laughs> into her hand and spur in her ear. My sincerest apologies, my little. <laughs> she hands it back to you. She says, Never, never you worry. I, uh, you're with, what was her name? You're with D- Vanderstutz. You're all right in my book. Uh, her name was look Le- Lenora. Lenora. Le- Lenora Straight uh, Slate Beer. Okay. And she owns. I, I turned to her. Her and her husband own the crooked. I, uh, gotcha. I turned to her and I go, uh, "Do you uh, do you happen to know my family then, or do you, do you just recognize the symbol? Like, are you? I'm not. Is she familiar with with my actual family, or just the? Ooh. Is she aware of my fam? Aware of the symbol the around her? At the question, her her face kind of drops a little, and she, ooh, uh, I I heard stories, but I never uh, I didn't actually. Uh, my my sincerest apologies, my, my I'm so sorry for your loss. I uh, my head kind of drops, and in a kind of I kind of like shy away, my shoulders slump down at this, and just like I yeah, it's it's all right. I uh, I, was, I I was just hoping you. Uh, you knew them. I was a good customer, nothing more, unfortunately. But, uh... Why? You know, I still keep it aged in the back, top shelf and all. Uh, do you... <coughs> do you mind if I, uh, if I get one for all time's sake? I'll, uh, I'll obviously pay for it. It goes for a pretty penny, but for you, I think I can whip up some. Yeah. So she... I give her a wink. <laughs> she goes, oh, and you lads, uh, the town council meeting's in the back. If you sneak in real quiet, just don't say I let you in. Sneak? So she <laughs> she heads into uh, the back to get... Uh, am, I fo- am I following her or am I staying with the group? It's up to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow her uh, as far as I can go towards the back while they do whatever they're doing. Okay. I uh, I scoop back to where I just moved. See if I can peer through the curtain. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk straight, just straight on through here, and to the meeting. Okay. <laughs> I follow Kosif. Um. Yeah. Well, I'm just screw the peering. I'm just gonna march right up. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> Okay. So as you as you enter the back room and the town council meeting is happening, uh, I think we should go ahead and just take a quick break here and then uh, be back in ten. Cool. Sounds good. All right. We'll be back, guys.
and we are back. So, we're going to let uh, good old Dungeon Master here take it away. We, uh, where do we leave off, David? Okay. So, we're about, you're about to enter the council meeting, uh, and you followed the tavern owner to the back to get uh, some of your famous uh, honey whiskey. Or whiskey hunting. Uh, do I do I follow her all the like? Because I stopped before I went all the way in the back. Am I like in the back with her? I mean, you you can be. I don't have a map for it, but you can be. That's okay. fine. Well, I, that was my question. Was like I didn't because again, I'm a patron here. I didn't want to like cross lines. Well, I mean, so <laughs> so I mean, you can wait at the at the entrance, or you can pop in the back if you want. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna hang out with Lenora. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. Cool. The meeting is being held in a plain room centered around a large wooden table with eight chairs set around it. Five of the chairs are filled with human men, one by a human woman, and two by halflings, one male and one female. As the party approaches, they will be able to hear raised voices, and when they enter, hear Tilius Merritt. And you hear him, and he's arguing with uh, a human shepherd, and the coral is saying, Tilius, you cannot sell our food sources that were intended for the village to meet contracts. It's just not conscionable. You cannot do it. This is where I draw the line. We cannot sacrifice our well-being to meet your contracts as enterprising as you want to be. I'm not unreasonable. I just have no other choice. If our contracts go lapse and our reputation gets tarnished, we could lose everything. Everything that we've been working for. If we could just get and he notices the party. What is this? Who let them in here? What is going on? And he turns and he addresses you. And all eyes stop and sort of look at you guys. We peek out from behind Kosif and wave. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We are here on behalf of, well, Tillis. Tillis, uh, you had requested aid to help you with the, uh, the little what? hairy beasties I've heard, huh? Who is this man? Who let him in here? Well, look, my we name have... is Kaim. And we've already dispatched with one of your wolves just coming into town. Ran off a pack of... I believe there was seven others that ran off. Enough of this. I, uh... Gods! In here at once! Get these people out of here! Oral interjects calmly. They mention the wolves. Perhaps we should hear them out. Mike! At this point... At this point, I walk in. Uh, I'm in the room with everybody now. Okay. You're back behind the bar still. Oh, I know. I'm, even, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to move myself, but I was on the wrong I was with us spiritually. <laughs> yes, I'm now here with everybody. Otilia so stops and he says, hmm. and he looks at you guys. I don't know by what witchcraft you say you know me, devil boy. Oh. I've not put any such posting or sent word or anything about anything. I'll hear none of your lies. May oh. I? Please. <clears throat> I don't think it matters much if you did or did not send, though clearly you should have sent for some help, if not strictly economically speaking. As your contracts, as you mentioned, cannot be fulfilled because you have not sent for professionals like ourselves. Now we stand here humbly before you, only offering you our aid, and you speak down to me and my companions. Sir, I ask you to please watch your tone and to understand that we are here for assistance, 
not as your enemy. Show him the paper! I'm unaccustomed to people barging into my town council meeting unannounced and making strange declarations from people I've never met before, so I, I apologize. If you're here to assist, then by all means, let me draft the contract. I cast Thaumaturgy Someone... right outside the window of the bar <laughs> for a loud wolf howl. Not yet. Someone write this down. <laughs> Hunters wanted. I, the mayor of Welton and council member, am going to dictate the contract to all of you so that there are no misunderstandings. We will get this sorted out right away. All right. Coral, by the order of the town council of Welton, a reward of 500. Coral looks at him sternly. 800 gold pieces to the hunter or party of hunters who can rid our peaceful town of the wolves that have been attacking our shepherds and ruining our livestock. And if you're looking at that piece of paper that you've been handing around, you see the words starting to appear <laughs> I am as he's in. dictating. <laughs> well, to <laughs> livelihood and cool. welfare are at risk. The utmost you. urgency is appreciated. Sincerely yours, Tellius Marion, Mayor of Welton Council, leader of Welton's Growers and Buyers Association. And as he got to that last line, I'm literally reciting it just slightly under my breath along with him. <laughs> and he sort of looks at you confused. <laughs> And he snatches the paper out of your hand and, look, and he's like looking at and then he's pointing at it and he's pointing and he's kind of conf he's like what the I'd like to I'd like to insight check this to see if he's really being genuine. Okay. <laughs> 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 it seems genuine to you. <laughs> All, right, All right. So, um, so upon co uh, composing it and grabbing this and sort of looking, at well, it's open to anyone. So, if you fulfill the contract, then you fulfill the contract. And, and uh, Coral sort of steps up, and and uh, and then you see another uh, another man, another human man, come out. Uh, and he uh, has a, a holy symbol around his neck. And uh, somebody make a religion check. Uh, you don't want me to do it. <laughs> well, who's got high intelligence? I. Okay. I just oh. made one. Yep. Uh, All right. So uh, it works. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. So Ara, you 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 look at this man that has uh, stepped up, and you and you see the holy symbol of uh, Pelor, the sun god, and uh, brother uh, to deity Serenre. Hmm. Ah, this is our language. Um. <laughs> and uh, they both seem to calm Tilius down a little bit, and and smile at the party and say, "We'll be most grateful for your assistance." Won't we, Father Merrickson? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming to help. Uh, I am Father Merrickson. I, I am I'm a priest of this town. Father Merrickson, we uh, we heard rumor of uh, of your brother Alexei along the road <coughs> coming into town. Uh, Yes, my brother Alexei, he's been missing for about the same time as the wolves. He was the protector. He was a sorcerer. I chose the cloth. He chose the magic. Father Max, and what kind of sorcery did your brother 
dabble in. He was a practitioner of the wild magic. A druid? No, he is a sorcerer, just the wild yeah. magic. So sometimes the, when he taps into his natural uh, talent, um, an unexpected consequence would occur. Do you have any reason to believe that his disappearance is connected with the wolves? I believe I'm 100% connected with the wolves. At the same time, I do not know what happened. He said he was going to go and do his usual protection spells, and then he vanished. I never see him again. And then suddenly these wolves are making strategic attacks on, on our livelihood. Do you know what lo- like, what direction uh, your brother normally took? I mean, he would make path, a usual path around the, the perimeter of Wilton. He was the protector. He would cast, you know, bless and protection from good, evil, that kind of thing. Uh... Is there uh, is there any anybody who uh, who's been around your brother recently? Like somebody who potentially could want to harm him, or uh, like somebody you think could be potentially behind his kidnapping or his disappearance? Sadly, I I I do not believe Alexi is with us anymore. Sorry to hear that. I, sc- I use I pray to Pelor and use these crying spells to find him and. Elor tells me he is with him. Do you have any physical evidence of his disappearance? Was there a a location that we could travel to? And was there any incidents? At this point, Coral steps back, steps forward again, and says, "I, uh, I." be more than happy to show you the path Alexi walked. Thank so much you. appreciated. Father Merrickson, once again, we, we apologize for your great loss. Thank you, and best of luck in hunting wolves. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Coral... Um, straightens his, his uh, clothes out. Uh, Coral is a human. He is a shepherd uh, and quite a uh, accomplished tracker. He is also um, lean, tough, uh, quiet, reserved man who respected by everybody on the village council. Uh, and usually he's not as uh, outspoken in as he is uh, in these times where he feels like he's more of the voice of reason. He's 50-ish and an expert in the local area. And so um, he's a good choice to, uh, the council agrees would be a good choice to serve as your guide to sort of show you. Uh, so he says, uh, when, when would you like to uh, journey out? I, I know you're just probably just arriving. I haven't seen you before, and uh, <laughs> no offense, but a group like you seems to stand out. Here. <laughs> uh, this is a DM question. What time of day is it? Uh, so you left in the morning. Now, after. Cool. So we'd have time before sunset. It's about we were to... three or four, um, and the, it doesn't start getting dark till about seven. Okay. So you have about. Three to four hours. Three daylight. So you want to go now? Well, Coral, I think it'd be wise for us to scout through the city, stay within the borders. And I don't know if our party agrees, but Kosif, I lean on your guidance in this situation. I think it would be best to leave first thing in the morning. Not travel straight out right at night. I agree, especially if uh, our hosts here serve the god of the sun, Pelor. 
So that, that, the so that's the, the priest father Merrickson is the is the is the is a priest of Palor. Um, Coral doesn't seem to have any sort of uh, anything to indicate that he is a follower, but, but yes, most of the town you could assume is a uh, worships Palor. It is a good plan. Okay, so uh, you wish for me to come back in the morning. Well, we might uh, scout around town. To, uh, tell me, it's a, is there a an alchemist shop here in your town? Unfortunately, no. We're not that kind of town. If, if you have need of meats or um, fleece, we, we can accommodate. We're not one for magic and such. That was pretty much Alexi's wheelhouse and everything else. Healing-wise, we uh, rely on the good Father Merrickson. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I approach and say, uh, um, for, uh, for rooms, uh, is this the, the only inn in town, and uh, what would the rate be to uh, stay a night here? Well, the North Lafayette is the owner of the uh, establishment. Sure that the town council can arrange a room for you, uh, seeing as hey, you are here uh, to uh, rid us of this nuisance. I mean, I don't know uh, what you've been informed of, but people have been abandoning their farms out of fear, leaving the village to either stop exporting the crops that have already been harvested and risk bankruptcy or go hungry. We are organized a posse of men to go out and hunt down the wolves, and, well, I mean, you can just ask poor uh, Will and Featherrock about that. That did not turn well. At this point, I reach into my bag and I pull out the leg that I cut off the wolf earlier to show him that we what? are indeed here for... <laughs> <laughs> for a job. Uh, this uh, well, this is what we plan to do for your to your wolf problem. We want to get rid of all of them for you. Uh, so I, I appreciate your time. <laughs> Where is this? Yes, thank you, Mister Featherrock. Oh, uh, oh, one moment, one moment. Then and, and then he goes and uh, peers out, and he gets Lenore, and Lenore comes back and yes, what what can I? Oh, uh, you disappeared on me. I went to go get your uh, honey whiskey. And... <laughs> My bad. I uh, I wanted to sit in on the council meeting here. I uh, I need to make sure. Uh, oh, all right. Well, I here. I set you up at the bar. If you want to come with me, uh, what what can I do for you, Coral? And then Coral says they are inquiring about. They're here about the wolves. And they are inquiring about the Willin. Poor Willen, he's not right, not since that the scouting party that went out and, well, you know. But, uh, I mean, I suppose it can't do any harm for them to ask him. He's right upstairs. Poor man. Anybody would, uh... I tend to scare folks around here. Right? <laughs> We're gonna leave this up to to you, Kosif, and you know the uh, height challenge people of our group. Well, <clears throat> this Willem, he said he's not right. Well, you see. Uh, we had a hunting party and we went out to deal with the wolves and well uh, it, it just went bad it went south and Willen was the only one we could recover and he's not making any sense Is he not making sense as in, like, mad? Or in, as in he's just been uh, maimed to the point where he uh, can't communicate? 
Well, I mean, it's best to just show you. So she kind of leads uh, you. Uh, who, who? Uh, it's gonna be a bit much for all of you to come creeping in on him. He's had been in bed for days. Uh, who? I um, would. Uh, I would recommend Latrine and Welly go, and and the three of us more imposing stay here. Yeah, I'll yes, saunter uh, up to the bar. Hey. And- you called me more imposing. Well, then the little <laughs> ladies, yeah. <laughs> so, so there is a, a mead that she has uh, pre-poured uh, for you guys. The honey whiskey that she went and got that is already on the bar for you. Um, but Where's the bar? At? Yoink. Yoink. It's up oh, top. Over there. Yeah, there. Oh, God. So, I can't move my dude. Um, so while you guys are down there, uh, uh, Latrine and, and Welly are going to go up and talk to, to, uh, Willen. Is that, yes. that the plan? Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, while we also go to the bar and pick up the, uh, the honey whiskey, I turn to the folks with me and I go, this is, uh, my family's, my family's drink. Uh, this, this, you know, when, uh. Uh, Lenora pulled me aside. It's because uh, this is this is this this has a special special place in my heart. And you see, you start choking up at the thought of uh, his family. He just starts getting a little little teary. Can't really talk. Ah, Torby, you're a softy. <laughs> All right, let's hold there, and then I'm gonna take uh, Welly and Latrine, and we're going to upstairs and uh, so Lenore leads you up and sort of gently knocks on the door and you see a young halfling man, uh, very young actually, who is uh, pretty badly wounded. He's laid up uh, and uh, and he sort of Father Merrickson, is it time for another session? Uh, and uh, Lenore sort of steps in uh, No dear, uh there's a, I have a two nice folk here that are here to visit you. They just want to see how you're doing and hopefully maybe ask you a few questions about, well, you know, what happened. She just kind of like gently like steps out of the room and just kind of lets you, ushers two of you in. And you see him kind of just white faced and soaked in his own sweat. His left arm is bandaged. And his uh, right leg is also bandaged. I uh, I slowly walk up to the bed. How you doing? Oh, I've been better. Uh, we went out as a hunt, and uh, we just weren't ready for what happened. What happened? Were you attacked by wolves or something else? I, sorry, but my memories are ha- hazy. But I remember. I remember walking out and suddenly hearing the dogs barking and the wolves. And but we didn't hear howls. We heard voices, gruff voices, and then fire and lightning. And I. And he breaks down. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, go, go at your own pace. You don't have to say anything else. Is there anything I can get you? Do you need some water? You need some food? I can go get it for you. Oh, uh, no, th- no, thank you. I, uh, I just, uh, I just need me rest. Okay. I, I have one more question for you, if that's okay. Okay. When you went adventuring to to go track these down, what direction? Like, did you go north, south? Which which direction did uh did you adventure out to? We believe the lair is to the northwest. Okay. All right. Uh, well, get your rest but and then we'll check in. They're not. To... And he stops.
and says nothing. And what? And to get more out of him, I would require in, uh, persuasion. Persuasion. Let's see. Here. I've got a. I should be a good on that one. I've got a four, but you could go. Okay, I'll uh, I'll do persuasion. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Well, so I uh, I tried to persuade <laughs> the persuasion. pillow to be softer. <laughs> <laughs> And it and it got even harder. <laughs> okay, he's kind of now going a little bit ta- catatonic, and he's just like saying, "They're not, they're not, they're not," and and that's it. That's all you're getting out of him. Okay. All right. What do you get out of that latrine? I'm trying to see if I have another. I mean, if you want to roll your own and try, you can. Okay. Um, Let's try it. But that'll be it. Oh. um, If this fails, it'll be game over. Do it. Wow. (laughs) Do it. Yeah, I'll do it here. Why not? Can't hurt. Hey. It's better. It's a little better. Your words resonated much better. They're they're what? Please pray continue. Okay. You place your hand on him and he seems to sort of calm at your touch. And with that he says They're not normal. I came to and I swear to you I heard them arguing. Fiercely over whether or not they should eat me. They were gonna eat me. And he that's it. Now, now he's he he sort of just <laughs> pulls the, the covers over his head and that's it. He's not coming out from under the covers. Okay. Well, we better go tell the others. Thank you for your time. He's just shivering under the covers. Okay. So I go back to the bar to let them know what we <clears throat> what we just heard. Um, while they're doing that, I'd like to ask the uh, the bartender how much it would cost to get a small glass of the um, drink that Torbjorn was so touched to have. Well, seeing as how you're with him and you're here with the wolves, I will, I, I will, I've broken open the cask. I said I would never would, but, you know, uh, normally I sell those for 10 platinum a, a glass. Oh, <laughs> that's, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I turn, I turn to her and go, how much for a bottle? Well, you know, it's limited supply. I can't just sell it. I mean, I could for you, but... Uh, this this is my family. How, how much for the bottle? Well, dear, let's just... Let's say if you if you take care of the wolves, maybe I'll think about right. presenting it. Sounds good. All right. So uh, she uh, also gives you food on the house. Um, you're staying at the inn per the town council, picking up the tab. Um, it pays to know me, right? What's that? <laughs> I said it's paying to get to know me. <laughs> Indeed. So. Uh, what what time it, is it still? It's still afternoon at this point. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it's getting on. Now about five, six in the evening. Um, I'm gonna ask as a bar- bartender. I flag bartender down to go. Hey, uh, bartender, is there any uh any any shops nearby that we can go to kind of like get a feel for the town? I would love to go out and just kind of see what what you guys have to offer here. I've never I've never been to Wellington before. 
Or Walter. Yes, he would like a change of clothes. He really likes changing his clothes. <laughs> Get a we costume de- shop. <laughs> we definitely have textiles. You can go and and pick out some some wool, but uh, some fleece. We've got the fleece fleecing uh, council across the way. Uh, I mean. If it's if you're really interested in fleecing and sheep, this is the town for you. Uh, <laughs> outside of that, um, it's, you don't have much else. We just sort of, yeah. you know. <laughs> Torbjorn loves fleecing. Let's go. Oh, Halflings, we like food and fleece, <laughs> and we like being enterprising. About it. <laughs> Uh, I turn to the table and kind of say, you guys uh, want to go uh, explore the town? You guys... huh. Let's go. Outside I'll go with Torbjorn. Town, outside of the Temple of Paylor, um, the town is pretty much just has your standard fare of uh, bakery, um, butcher, blacksmith, um, and, and lots of farmers, lots of shepherds. And you can smell it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Gentlemen, you ladies, gentlemen, feel free to leave. I'm I'm perfectly happy right here. And I look to the barkeep and ask her, I'm like, would you mind a bit of music in here? Liven this place up. Take some of the dread away. Oh, uh, sure, are you... You have to play some music, then. It's on the house, my lady. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I can't promise the patrons won't throw things at you if you're terrible, but uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right. It's all set up. Set up here. Is that a throne? What is that at the top there? Is that just a... What is set over here? It's a fireplace. <laughs> I'll set up there. There's a fireplace. Just start playing. Okay. As he does that, I'm going to head out of the tavern to go find... Just wander around the town. Um, okay. Just seeing what's there. Uh, I do want to head towards... And if if Welly wants to go with me, uh, obviously more than welcome. But I want to head towards uh, the fleece shop. Okay. I go with uh, Torb. All right. So the flea shop is not much uh, per se. It's uh, it's several. It's it's almost like uh, just a, a system of uh, of people that are just constantly fleecing and uh, and binding for sale. Um, uh, but since the wolf attack, there you find that they're kind of scarce in product, and uh, a lot of the people that normally work there aren't there and there's maybe like one yes. or two uh people that are there shaving sheep for wool and uh that kind of thing but uh even them they look haggard they look tired and they look worried hungry is this a uh like is there a tailor here or is it just like raw materials it's for the most part raw materials just sort of make do with what what they um you know leathers that sort of thing Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go to they like if you ask for something, they just sort of point you to the blacksmith to, you gotcha. know, get something I, uh, made. If you how many, how many people, how many employees, whatever you want to call them, do I see in front of me? Well, so you see a state, you see like stations for like six to mm-hmm. seven people, but there's actually only two people there, and one is doing absolutely nothing except just looking worried, and the other one is sort mm-hmm. of just. Uh, trying to look busy but like you can tell that the fact that there are no sheep there to for them to work on is is really troubling i uh i walk up to both of them and give them both a gold apiece and just say this is uh for your troubled times um your your, your problem will be taken care of i, I promise you and both you know, they s- smile and and uh accept the gold and, and give you their thing uh, is there any way I could do an investigation check just to see if there's 
like anything out of the ordinary or just anything that it doesn't blend in. Sure. Cool. Uh, where what where, where, where are you to get in the uh, the textile uh, area or? Uh, mainly just around the shops to see if there's anybody um, like that just doesn't fit in with the the textile crowd or just okay. looks off. Okay. Um, no, I mean you can you can make the oh you made a fifteen okay uh, yeah. with a fifteen. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, you've from what you've heard, the wolves don't go into town. They don't. Uh, they yet to actually go to a populated place uh, that they always attack. It's almost like they're aware of what the trade routes are and when people do things. And uh, it's like they're acting intelligent. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to do here then. I turned to Welly. Well, uh, you want to go anywhere else? You want to head back with the uh, the rest of the, the crew? Uh, let's let's head back. Let's let's get back to them. Make sure they're doing okay, and we should probably turn in soon. So we can get we can go I, find it. I agree. So we head back to the. What's the name of this tavern again? It's the shepherd. The uh, shepherd's crook. Crooked shepherd. Or shepherd's crook. Yeah. So, Crooked uh, shepherd. <clears throat> While they're off shopping. This might be a good opportunity for me to have a conversation with Latrine. Okay. If if you're there, Latrine. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Apparently, she yells at you. <laughs> that was the idea. Oh man. Uh, Latrine, I. I I noticed that we uh, we serve Sarah and Ray both. I uh, have to say this is a, a uh, very welcome addition in my heart to the party to see uh, another believer with me. How, how did you come? How did you come about serving Sarah? Ray? Well, I. I have to say I didn't always, but a very wise man, whom I respect very greatly, showed me that Saren Ray is ever merciful to those willing to repent. And, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know what else to say than that, but she changed my life, and now and now that's, that's why I'm here. She's led me here. And uh, Nate, being a cleric of the uh, the knowledge domain for Saren Ray, you rec- recognize immediately that uh, Kosif is a new paladin for uh, your faith, and that he lacks some of the guidance uh, that a paladin of Saren Ray would normally have. Uh, make a religion check for me. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and I that's all. I heard there was a man in a book. <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> she, she is a young elf. <laughs> she is young. She has much to learn. <laughs> I'm not you remember two shits? <laughs> <laughs> you remember um you remember seeing paladins uh visit the temple before, but you didn't interact much with them and it was more your fault. Yeah, I'm a little naive. Um <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, I was kinda left at the doorstep, so I know no different. Oh, I have to say I'm jealous of that upbringing. But no matter, we'll have plenty of time to discuss Sarah and Ray and uh, 
her mercy and her guidance. I feel uh, I feel that this group that we are with uh, will need the wisdom that we can share with them. Indeed, they do. But uh, tomorrow, then, I guess we will find out more about these wolves. In the morrow, yes. Great, good, good talking to you. I'll I say, at this point, you see, you see me and Welly come back in, uh, and we join the rest of the group uh, at the table here, officially. Okay, so uh, do you guys want to? Are you guys retiring for the evening? Do you have any other things you want to do? I'm gonna listen to this beautiful uh, sound from that beautiful guy. Um, <laughs> I uh, I do turn to, to Kaim as he's playing off in the distance, and I go, "That's my boy." <laughs> and then sit back down. <laughs> A little different from the last time you heard him play. Yes. <laughs> Last, well, last time I heard him play, the the it, it was uh, a little bit more intoxicated at that point. <laughs> I think that's intoxicated. So, I can see that everybody in this bar just seems sad and just kind of beat down from the situation they're in. And so, for everybody in this bar, for my final song of the night, I will perform a song of rest for them. Okay and weave in my magic into the room to soothe everyone's wearied hearts and souls and nobody's been damaged obviously so, but unless there was but i it was the, was the gentleman upstairs in here in this bar or in this this tavern is he the the guy well, who was the, the guy who was hurt that uh, uh-huh. Willie and yeah, yeah, he's upstairs. Uh-huh. I I want to make sure that I've positioned myself in such a place that the music can go upstairs and help soothe him. Okay. Knowing full well that these people might not look kindly upon my kind, I want them to know that I mean them no harm. So I will perform a song of rest to finish the evening. As you begin to play, the lights start to slowly dim as if magically inclined to do so giving you a little extra mood to help facilitate your the mood you're trying to uh, set. I put my arm around Welly, and I put my arm around... Who else is next to me? Who's that next to me? That's me. That's you? And around... Uh, around Kosef, and just start doing, like, the sway back and forth as the music comes I mean, in. Kosef's leg? <laughs> Well, I mean, yes. I put it around his waist. How tall? How Joseph? How tall are you? I uh, I look at Latrine and ask her, "Have you ever drank mead from a shoe?" Have you ever drank mead from a? (laughs) Oh, sorry, that was kind of wrong. Um, no. I I haven't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to have a kumbaya album, and then that happened. <laughs> I will start dancing though to this lovely music. Well, you know the the the, the bar is loosening up. Everything's getting it is getting a little better. People are resting. The music is yeah. soothing. The patrons of the bar are uh, swaying slowly, drinking. Uh, There's more cheering to each other than there has been in the entire time that they've been there. Uh, It seems to be seems to be a serene uh, mood that's fallen over the the tavern. I left my drink and uh, toast, and I go to. uh, to getting these wolves and bringing peace back to this town. They all raise their glasses to you. (laughs) To the drunk dwarf in the back! (laughs) (laughs) One of them spouts. Hey! That's my man! (laughs) Or woman, I don't know. I didn't see what to do. I don't know. 
Can't tell from this distance. So, I think with that, uh, we. What I'm just gonna say, I'm ready to retire for yep. morning, so then we can get on. Okay. Adventure. Complete song, and I walk up. Okay. Are we we staying in the tavern? Yeah. Like upstairs or something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, free lodging, um, because of cool. Torbjorn's uh, grace. Set. <laughs> In the morning, both uh, you're greeted uh, downstairs uh, to a breakfast. Um, nothing fancy. It's just uh, some oatmeal and uh, some uh, fresh squeezed uh, juice that she was able to procure from the local farmers that she serves for her guests in the morning. Uh, and that's uh, on the house as well. Uh, also, uh, you know, as you're finishing your breakfast, you notice the um, entrance of Coral. And Father Merrickson both here to greet you this morning. As as they come in, I do put uh, ten copper on the table for uh, Lenora as the, just a gift of like thank you so much for taking care of us these last this last few or I guess day. <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. Thank you, and good luck to you yes. today. We've got the whole town praying for you. Why, thank you. We uh we appreciate it. And, uh, Coral comes up and he's, um, we I'm I'm ready to go when you are. Father Merrickson came to uh, bless us on, and and wish us well this morning. So he's with us as well. Yes. Good morning. I'm I'm here, wishing you good luck on your hunter's journey. And uh, blessings from my brother's memory. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Father. Father Merrickson, for the first time, seems notices both the symbols of Saren Ray around uh, both of uh, Latrinan. Ah, Saren Ray. You are a follower of Saren Ray. I? I am. <laughs> I turn to him and I go. She's a lady of few words. <laughs> it's good to see a fellow priest and a, a champion, a champion of Sir and Ray. We are honored indeed. It's I who is honored. I. <laughs> well, with that, Father, we must be going. We have a long days of slaying to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Father Merrickson says to you, uh, one, one moment, please, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pa- Mr. Champion. Yes, sir. I notice, I notice you, no, you don't have your horse. Uh, no, sir. Have you um, not aware of how to summon your mount? I was not aware I had a mount to summon. <laughs> <laughs> a man of few words. <laughs> if, if this is something that you can teach me, I am. It takes, if you permit me. He mm-hmm. takes his cool. hands around yours, and he and he closes his eyes. He says, "Think about your horse. Think about mount you have." Thinking about mounting. Do, Got it. Do you have your mount? <laughs> Did you have a horse before? Uh, Joseph. Potentially, <laughs> I never really thought about that with his backstory. Honestly, if he had a horse. What is- did Joseph have a horse? Uh, let's say yes. As you focus and you remember what that horse looked like, suddenly uh, one of the shafts of sun sort of shine down and you hear the neighing of a horse. If you summon your horse, you will come. It is a gift for the world champions of Seren Ray. That is amazing. Thank you. 
I don't, I don't want to summon him in the bar, but... <laughs> <laughs> he Why does not? this out. He does this outside. As okay. You, as you're... Because he notices <laughs> that you only have... You know, as it's as you're embarking, because he notices you only have three, and that you were... Okay. Well, then I will, I will summon... I will do whatever is necessary. I guess reach down into my heart and summon this horse. Okay. Yep. The so the where you heard the neighings, you uh, you turn, you look, and you see the horse that uh, appears just as if uh, it was Joseph's, your former master. Wow. I'm going to approach it. It's free. Pet it gently. Well, look at that, Joseph. You've got your old wild stallion there. Eh? <laughs> and I'll, I'll have those stats for you at the end of the night. Thank you. Hey, Toby. Hey. You're going to get to ride peppermint, huh? Yay, peppermint! <laughs> I go, I go <laughs> waddling up to peppermint as I should <laughs> with my little legs and go up and try and like <laughs> hug her. It's, wait, is peppermint a male or female? Peppermint's a girl. Okay, I hug her around the neck. And, uh, Blake, you're all mine, I love you. Uh, and start kissing her. It's not the first time you put something <laughs> sweet between your legs, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know. Beautiful yeah. moment has been ruined. <laughs> <laughs> That's payback for the sweet songs and the speaking of drinking beer out of a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love you, cocks. <laughs> Uh, okay, can everyone see the... Yes. It's a wood. Very pretty. Okay. So Coral leads you out into the woods, and uh, he begins... Say, I thought first we would go where um, Alexi would make his rounds. And, uh, and he takes you to, you know, starting at the church where Alexi would uh, leave his brother to go make his path along the uh, perimeter of town to uh, to uh, cast his uh, protection spells. Um, I would say, Welly, go ahead and make an investigation. Yes. I'm going to investigate the heck out of these woods. <laughs> okay, with a t- Oh, hell yeah. Wow. Jeez. With, with the 23, you see the... the your uh, your rock gnome uh, robe uh, start to notice uh, something on the floor and begin to intently follow the trail to uh, a clearing. And in the clearing, you see signs of a ritual cast that uh, appears to have been disturbed and a black mark on the uh, floor uh, where it appears that either lightning struck or uh, something was burned and ashes. Hmm. I uh, I don't like anything that I'm seeing here. As uh, uh, Coral comes up, he's like he notices that this looks a lot like something uh, Alexi would uh, would have set up. Uh, any spellcasters in the party uh, can make an arcana check for me. That's not. I mean, uh, uh, I, I can I can uh, do that since I, uh, I I uh, do have that ability. Okay. Uh, Kaim doesn't just did no doesn't recognize the uh, oh. the setup. Neither does Welly. Hey, natural Kostas. twenty. Natural twenty. <laughs> okay. Both, uh, both the uh, the priest and paladin of Saren Ray uh, noticed that, and and uh, the the spell components are uh, for ritual casting of uh, of bless, and it looks like it it was interrupted. Uh, and you've seen the side effects of wild magic before, and this looks like that whatever happened was uh, interrupted. Um, and and wild magic fired off, causing uh, disastrous consequences. 
I would say, well, you could determine based on that if so, if they say that out loud, that the ashes are probably Alexi. I say that out loud. <laughs> I uh, I reach down and into into the ashes and put them into a, a, a small pouch so that I could bring them back to his brother. Oh, you beat me to it. Okay. Very thoughtful. Um, and anybody want to make another investigation check for me? Yeah, while I was sifting through, yeah, I guess I'll make that investigation trick. Um, anybody want to help me with that? Uh, uh, it's. Uh, do you want me to do it or? Well, if you he's help asking him, if you help him, it'll to get, get so he gets advantage. Yeah. Oh, I will oh. definitely help. <laughs> okay. Okay. You don't I notice anything. That didn't roll with advantage. Why did uh, that not do roll, it? roll again. Just roll a straight one again. And yeah, just roll, roll, a, yeah, just roll a second one. Twelve. Uh, nope. Oh, oh yep. Better. <clears throat> you see, um, as you bend down, you notice uh, the distinct... Uh, actually, make a animal handle check for me. For is that kind? I did. Oh, okay. okay. You see an animal print, but you you, do, you cannot determine what kind of animal. Like in in the vicinity of the the black scar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hey, take a look here. His animal prints. He wasn't alone. I come over, come over and investigate. Said print. Uh, am I able to do an animal handling check? Uh, it's a second pair of eyes, or no? So, uh, to examine it, I'll just make a wisdom check for me. Straight wisdom? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. No. You're not sure. Could be wolf. Could be a fox. Could be... Yeah. Could be any, any of those... <laughs> Four uh, four legged furries that <laughs> have similar prints. Well, it's so, certainly it's not a little birdie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> could I uh, could I do another investigation check to see if I see any like markings on the trees or any other uh, you may. pathways? All right, fourteen. Okay, along the. Uh, the area you you notice the distinct marks markings of singeing and burns. We've got more more singeing and burns this way. Might want to follow that. Also, you notice uh, with a fourteen. I'll say also you notice uh, that there were several uh, wolf prints that seemingly came across and fleed from the area. Like if they were running, running through, and and then suddenly something happened, and they ran. Did they did they stick together, Willie? Uh, it looks like we had quite a few, but they may not have been the reason he went down. Hmm. What's the uh, who's the guy with us? What's his name? Uh, that's uh, um, Cora. 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 I look. I want to like look at Cora's reaction as we're saying this information. See if I can gauge anything from. Coral, uh, this is all seem okay. Go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Uh, where's insight? Insight. Nice. Eighteen. He seems as surprised by this as uh, you guys do. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, let's head off, huh? Bye. Let's. Okay. Continue on down the path. So, uh, so you guys are going to continue on and follow the tracks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you you keep continue on until you come to a clearing. Oh, uh, bad time. Clear, clearings are never good. Hey, clearing. Toby. You want to dress in your normal hey. clothes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you shut it, man. Uh oh, there it is. Okay, I was like, there's supposed to be something on my screen. Yeah. Found it. 
Uh, so you guys are coming across this clearing, and let me reveal it all for you. I, as as uh, as Kaim says that, I start unhooking my chest plate as like a joke. And what is the uh, what's your marching order? Uh, uh, I will be in front. For, uh, from a party standpoint, hold on. Um, yeah, who's who's. Just for general purposes, let's. Who's got the highest AC? I've got twenty-two. Well, crapola. I've got a. I've only got a twenty in comparison, but Still. I have some. I have some protective skills, and uh, and have a tendency as a as an individual to want to protect those around me. So, um, so I would naturally move towards the front if we were walking someplace that yeah. was dangerous. I'm usually going to be I'll go, I'll... stacked behind Torby and Kosif. I will do my best to hide behind Kosov at any point. <laughs> so if Kosov wants to be first, I'll be right behind him. As we walk into the clearing, I am just straight up, straight forward. I'm just hood right up. Like, my okay. hood on my cloak is going right up. The uh, the elven kind yeah. cloak? What is that? Oh, yeah. That gives us something. I don't remember what that gives us. I don't remember how to find the details on that cloak. Oh no, it's in our uh, notes. While you wear this cloak, it's hood with its hoods up. Wisdom perception checks may to see you have disadvantage, and you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks. Yeah, so well, I don't, I don't put the hood. I don't. Probably put the hood be up. in your best interest to put your cloak up, huh? All right. Is that a good placement? <laughs> <or do you laughs> <want> <laughs> Is that accurate? Or are you guys all yeah. that line? That works. Um, I probably ought to like um, <laughs> be a little bit toward the front. I don't know. Um, maybe to I uh, maybe to the other side of the 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 dude, uh, Cora. I only see me. You wait. You don't see everybody else. No. I only see the other We have a whole L going on. Yeah, we were in the and shape of the cross. Of yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you're following the tracks, and uh, you come upon this clearing. And let's see here. Uh, Tim, zoom out. Make sure you're not zoomed in too far, because I had to zoom out to see everything. Yeah, that might be the problem. I had to zoom out a bit to see everything. No, I mean no. I mean, you guys would have to be like sixty feet behind me for me to. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm literally right yeah. behind you. I'm I mean, I see you. the I see the tokens in the shadow next to me. I see my token, and then they're kind of. Oh yeah, I see an arrow coming out of there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe I didn't reveal that. Let me re let me make sure that's all. You see it now? No. Not a. Should I refresh? Yeah, maybe. I got nothing. Hmm. Let me remove you and re add you, see if that makes it. I'm right here. And it's like when I yeah. when I go to move myself, mm -hmm. like I can see myself fading as I move to the left or right off of this square. That's weird. Let me see if I can just. You have a red bar underneath. Oh no, that's probably. I don't have light. Never mind. Anymore. That's behind. Oh, I do have that though. Okay. So oh, hey! Ah. Look at that! Hey! Whoa. Hey, everyone! The map was okay. brown. Now there it's green. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. <clears throat> okay. Light. So, uh, about two hours travel, you come ac across this, uh, this uh, clearing. Dense undergrowth of uh, the western woods. 
uh, and you begin to hear the sounds of snapping twigs and rustling leaves. Something big coming this way. Uh, can I can I do a perception check to see if I can identify what it is? You may. Uh, perception. Uh, that's Ooh, something. With an 18. Okay, so... No, 20, 22. Oh, 22. Okay, before. so... Yeah. Uh, you've heard... You've heard the sound of a bear trampling through the woods before. This is something slightly bigger, and it seems like it's in a hurry coming your way. Oh, shit. Hmm. Mm. I, uh, I turn around... Well, I, I tap Kosef on the shoulder and whisper in his ear, All right! It's a big one. And I turn around to the rest of the party and let them know as well that uh, we got something. We got something bearing down on us very quickly. I prepare <laughs> for battle, boys. And I pull out my loot immediately. And I walk <laughs> right up to Torby. And I'm just going to I'm gonna cast uh, Bardic Inspiration. I'm just... You can run far. <laughs> Good. Now go kick some ass. Yeah. <laughs> I assume All I right. try inspiration that on in my character sheet. I'll pop it in there. So, Bardic, you get uh, you get in the next ten minutes. You can roll a d6 to be added to one ability check before or ability afterwards. Okay. You decide. Cool. I would like to hide if I can. Okay. Go ahead and roll a stealth check for me. Do yeah. Here's a here's a retroactive no. question. Do I know which direction the sound was coming from? Do you from? get an advantage because you have the hood up? Or oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Roll one more time. Just roll another one. Yep. Uh... <clears throat> hey. That's oh. not bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right. I think you're pretty well hidden. <laughs> <laughs> you could hide in Torbjorn's beard for a while. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be a surprising pincher attack. Yeah. <laughs> Just a small arm out of the beard. Okay. With the, yeah. <laughs> the sound sounds getting closer. Does anybody want to do anything for? Uh, which direction is it coming from? Do I, did I it get sounds that like it's coming from the northwest. I'm gonna load the direction you were trapped. I'm gonna load my short bow okay. and hold an attack. If okay. I see if I see anything threatening. Okay. Uh I don't think I have anything I really want to do. Uh let's see. I think. Can I uh no. Uh, is it so it's back in the woods still, though? Like can I it's yeah. It's uh, so, so. Is you're coming, you know. As you're you're following this trail, it's been about two hours. You come mm -hmm. upon this clearing. You're hearing this noise. It's you hear it, it's running. It's coming in your direction. You don't know if it's coming at you or if it's running yeah. from something, but you know it's coming in your direction. I uh, I actually run up here and climb this tree. Okay, make a uh, athletics check for me. Okay. Now oh, 20, oh, oh. <laughs> you climb that tree without a problem. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I think. Um, okay. I think I want to cast sanctuary on, okay. the on the train, so that if any, if the if the bear tries to attack our healer. Um, They'll have to make a wisdom saving throw first. Okay. Um, I'm not taking okay. his shit. <laughs> you, still, you still have your action and, and your movement. Okay. Um, t -t 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 -t. Well, I'll, wait, I'll take my movement. And I'm I'm going to uh, plead with our, our guide here, Coral, that he move back behind us all. Okay, and I think he, uh, I'll I'll move right up here. He agrees and steps back, and uh, I'm gonna have him roll. 
just laugh for a moment. See. Is there a okay. ma match to grid option? For the there is, but uh, this is as good as it's going to get right now. So. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was something on my end I needed to do. N no. Okay. Okay, so uh, ah! suddenly, oh, hello, <laughs> and quickly, you see an owl bear who is apparently uh, oh, and very apparently um, injured, and oh. Uh, oh. it is uh, looking very desperate and uh, limping, obviously, uh, but it is uh, trying to nurse its uh, wounds. Uh, and run almost simultaneously, which is causing it to like run into all kinds of uh, twigs and why it's making so much uh, noise. I immediately and, uh, disengage my arrow. Okay. Uh, the owl bear comes into view um, and uh, sees Kosif and. Uh, Looks like he sees. Who else does he see? How far is he from me? He sees Kosif and Kaim. It's 40 feet from you. 40 feet. And is going to charge for attack. So let's everybody roll initiative. Damn it. I was hoping he was going to accept help. Should have yeah. let loose my arrow. Oh well. Why is it not rolling initiative there? Click your token, shove the button in the top left. Click your yeah, it, token. It doesn't, which is weird. Ah! A little loud. I'll turn it down. No, it just scared me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, he was not prepared for the It's my music. own music, and it still scared me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those of you who are watching, Bertrand made a lot of the music you're, you're, you are hearing, by the way. So shout out to him. Yes, thank you, Bertrand, for all of the music I'm using tonight, uh, oh, with yeah. uh, slight exception to a couple of ambiance things I'm doing. But, <laughs> There's uh, a bug on my lamp right may now. May okay. be swimming with bow-legged women. <laughs> it looks like the owl bear gets gets to go last on its initiative, uh, and it looks like came you're up first. Okay. The train well. didn't get added to the order. Who didn't? Oh, I didn't. The train. Did Nope. Now let me she got a twenty point one six, or she Here, second. Let me uh, let me do it. Well, I'm last. I already had that that twenty point one six should have been in there. Yeah, I don't know why, but whatever. Did you use it off your off the button on your token? Um, I the initial one I don't think I did, but this time I did. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, just make sure you use that because it'll exactly. put, it won't put you in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kane looks like you're up first. Okay. I'm just... Since he's charging... It's charging because it sees... Uh, it's, you know, it's hurt, desperate, and now it sees threat. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna go, call out to it and, and immediately just raise my hand and just be like, We are not a threat to you. We can see you are in danger. Please do not injure us, and we will step aside and let you be on your way. And I'm going to move, uh, move myself over here, kind of behind this tree a little bit, and I'm going to hold my attack. If it touches or does damage to a single party member, I will let loose my short bow. Okay. That's the end of my so turn. All right. Well, well, you're up. You are hidden. It does not see you. I, so I, uh, I, I, I see what what Kame is doing, um, but I do want to try to to disable it and uh, take it down with a with a with my hand crossbow here. Mm. <laughs> that was a natural one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I shot so the bush. So you fire your crossbow and the, the uh, bolt goes wide and the uh, owlbear sort of startled and sort of stops its mid-charge and 
just kind of like stops in a defensive position. All right. Um, that's, I'm, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay hidden. That's my turn. Okay. All right. Kosif, you're up. And Torb, you're on deck. I'm going to uh, shout over to Kaim and ask him, what makes you think this bear, this owl bear, is not dangerous? He's running from something bigger. If something that big is running with that kind of charge and that kind of damage, something bigger is coming. I feel like Kosef's on an island right now. <laughs> Man. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's where I intended to be to, to ensure that I keep the the bear out, the out bear away from you guys. But uh, all right, I'm going to um, fall back to here, and I will hold my attack for if the owl bear comes into uh, comes into uh, attacking me okay is that it cool. is that in your turn uh, that'll end my turn okay torb you're hidden in the uh, tr- do i so i can see i can see the it though but it just can't see me correct do i know anything about the owl bear like, have I come across one of these before? Make a nature check. Well, oh, fuck. Probably not, then. That's not bad. 13. Well. You know that owlbears are not considered beasts. They are considered monsters. Uh, you know that they inhabit caves and usually don't dwell out in the daytime unless they've been uh, provoked or driven out of their home. Um, fuck, what do I want to do now then? I, uh... I'm going to... I'm going to stay in the tree for now. And I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait and see what happens here. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just going to hang tight. Um, I do act... No, no, yeah, I'm just going to stay here. The owlbear is going to take its full movement and charge at Kosif. And it is going to make two attacks. Do I get, to, do I get to uh, make my attack as well? You do. And yeah, mine. Yep. Both of you will get your attacks. Okay. So uh, it looks like the beak, hit. beak hits, but the claw missed. And that's 10 points of piercing damage to you. And then go ahead and make your attack. I can mark, I'll mark your hit points down. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so that's Uh, a 17 attack. Okay, that definitely hits. Roll damage. Ten, Ten slashing. Slash. Okay. So you uh, you stab at, at the uh, owl bear who has made a desperate charge at you, uh, and uh, it freaks as the um, takes ten points of slashing damage. Then I'll let loose my short bow. Okay. And then 13 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Seven. Nice. Okay. Maybe also like heart rate goes up when combat starts. <laughs> All right. My watch is telling me to breathe. That is, <laughs> yeah. And that, that takes yeah, us. Yeah, you are staring down an owl bear. <laughs> that takes us to Ara. Okay. Let's try. Now, 
Let's see here. We're trying to figure out point of well. I'm trying to figure out so uh, dungeon master. My biggest worries is um, basically the the beast of a bear is kind of mm -hmm. a little bit offset, but I'm worried about hitting um, Kosif. Um, shoot, I don't know if that's it's kind of are in you, between, I guess. Are you what are you what are you trying to do? Um, short bow. Okay. I would say uh, you could you can make the attack, but you'd have to do a disadvantage because uh, it's in melee with Kosev. You just I take your movement and just step to the side. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm probably going to do actually. Here is, I'm uh, sorry. I was just thinking of that. I want to get a gonna... little bit. Yeah. Better. So maybe over here. Um. So I got 15 movement over to this side right here. That gives me line of okay. sight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, use a spell since Kosif got um, injured a little bit here. But I'm going to give him guidance right here. Okay. So, so you're going to have a D4. Um, just to let you know there, Tim. Okay. And then I'm going to use my short bow, because I can do both of those, right? Uh, guidance is an action, and then you want to do what? So I can only do one action, though. Um, and then I want to get in a defensive posture, I guess. Okay. All right. And that takes us back to the top of the round. Time you're up. Well, on deck. Okay. I will take another short bow attack. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page here. Core. Oops. So, uh, that hits. Fine. Roll damage. <laughs> Steady sevens, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you hit the you, the uh, arrow pierces the owlbear and it lets out another shriek as it starts to look really hurt. Okay, I'll stay there. Okay, well you're up. All right, I would like to move um, potentially over here. Um, so I want to move right there so I can get a hit on it, but I still want to be in stealth. Okay. Do you, can you do you have the ability to bonus action hide as a rogue? I think you do, but I would just believe check. so. Let me check uh, for you. I believe you do, but I also have uh, what's that? Cunning yes. action? You, you, yes, you have cunning action. Yes, so you can. Okay. You can hide as your bonus action. Yes, you can uh, move, shoot, and then hide. Okay, so I'm gonna move right, cha, and I need to run or I need to roll stealth, correct? Right. Well, you want to fire first, right? Well, I, yeah, I wanted. Well, I wanted to hit, try to hit him, but I wanted to make sure I was still sneaky, so I could. Um, I got gotcha. you. You want to hide attack. and do a sneak attack. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So I rolled you, an eighteen for stealth. You you believe you're well hidden. All right. And crossbow. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Roll damage. All right. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So is, wait, is that is that thirteen points total then? Just for my knowledge. Correct. He's, she's stealth. Yep. So you you hit and uh, do thirteen points of damage, and uh, the owl bear is looking very bad. All right. 
that that ends my turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, that brings us to Kosif. Certainly, let's uh, you know attack with the longsword. <laughs> that, that just gl- hits. That glory. All right. Uh, Dude. Let's, let's do the uh... seven. Seven damage. Seven damage, Tim. Seven slash yeah. damage. Yeah. <laughs> hey! As you slash at the owl bear, the owl uh, lets out a final pathetic hoot as it collapses to the ground and is unconscious. Yay! Yay! Yay. I mean, yay! <laughs> I, oh, I can't shit. do my lady voice that well. Stay alert, friends. Stay alert. Yep. I fear we're not out of the woods yet. (laughs) (laughs) I will stay alert then. I'm uh, going to walk over to the hour bear. and and, uh, DM, this is an interesting question. Just I I know that I don't necessarily need the components, but would an owl bear feather count as an owl feather? Uh, I would say no. Okay. <laughs> Close, but I assume we're out of combat. But at I, point, I right? do want to investigate investigate his wounds. Okay. Cool. You can tell from the um sorry, roll investigation for me. Okay. Uh, you can just you just know. Anybody anybody <laughs> else interested in these wounds? Yeah, I would like to assist. <laughs> okay. I clicked advantage. Is it going to roll with advantage? No, so I'll nope. do it again. Roll again. 13. That's better. Better. Okay. Uh, I would say a 13 allows you to determine that uh, that these uh, were caused by wolves, and the wounds appear to be a couple weeks old. Oh. Uh, interestingly, though, you also notice scorch marks on the uh, creature's fur. Singe and scorch marks. Uh, I... Coral, would you mind taking a look at this with us, huh? You seem to be the expert around these parts. Uh, Coral steps up and takes a look, and he's, and, uh, you know, as you're saying that they're wolves, he sort of looks shocked. It's it's very rare for wolves to challenge owlbears. Do you believe this could be? Also, very rare that an owlbear is in the daytime like this. Do you believe that some of these scorch marks, do they look like they could have been a part of Alexei's demise? I don't know anything about that. I'm a shepherd. I I don't know anything about magic or any of that. I know the land. And I can tell you that this looks unnatural. I believe an owlbear looks unnatural, but, you know, I agree. (laughs) No, the way that... The fact that the owlbear is out in the daylight, the fact that wolves attacked it, and the fact that it has singe marks, all very curious. Right. While this is going on, can I do another perception check? Uh, just to make sure there's nothing else in the vicinity. Go ahead. And then, Bertrand, what I what did you give me a plus D4 if I need it? Is that what it was? Uh, yeah, for any ability check. Uh, D6 on any ability check. D6. If you, you can roll it before or after. I'll roll first and see what I get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll it. Uh, hold on, I get into my dice here, which is on my other screen. D one d six. All right. Oh, oh wow. Okay, so with the that'd take you up to twenty three. Uh, with the twenty three, you, uh, you don't notice anything different, but you you can determine the path uh, the owlbear came from. Cool. Uh, I, I, I turn to the, the party and kind of point the way of like, it, uh, it, it appears to uh, come from uh, this direction. If we want to go see what's hunted, what's uh, uh, been hunting it down, clearly these wounds, as we can see, have been uh, are a little, little older, but who knows, the, the thing might still be around. I say we follow this path backwards, find out where it came from. 
Agreed. Uh, was this the general direction that we were heading anyway, where Anna came from? It it sort of was. This is sort of this is more of a direct path, though. You can kind of like. It seems like it's um, <laughs> like because of the owl bear's haste in getting away, it didn't do anything to mask where it came from. So following this back is like breadcrumbs. You just can follow all the smashed twigs and the uh, blood trail of the owl bear. That kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Toby, you know, my, my good little man, uh, I gave you inspiration to, to battle, not to become a, a <laughs> monkey and hide in the tree. <laughs> what good is all that armor if you're not going to use it? <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I thought the bear was going to be friendly. And uh, it turns out it was not. I hoped he would be as well. but I, uh, I bent down to the owl bear and kind of pat it on its head and like, I don't blame you. It's not your fault. Something, some, something bigger is after you. Rest, my dear man. Rest, my little man. You. And then I'd slice its leg off and take its oh, leg. Oh, crying. <laughs> By the gods at all. Oh, does he have room in the bag, DM? Because damn. Sorry, I have a wolf leg in there. Remind me never to die around Torb. <laughs> Unfortunately, he can carry 500 pounds of legs in there. Yeah, you you guys keep seeing him stick unusually large objects into this small bag, and uh, it doesn't seem to affect the weight or size of the bag. Hmm. Hmm. This is so. I got two, and we want legs. I, I got say, two legs. This is- does this magic only work with animal Who? appendages, or is like <laughs> can you store other things? There? I don't know. I I turn I turn to Welly, grab Welly, and shove Welly in the back. <laughs> oh man! What other kind of legs you got in there? <laughs> All right. So uh, need the party to elect someone to make a wisdom or nature check for me, and the. Or a survival, do. sorry, survival check for me. I can. Then... I'll do. Sur- I can do. Unsane plus four survival. Oh, let's right. have you do it then. Yeah. yeah. I got zero for survival. I'm pretty good at that. Sixteen. Okay, twelve is exactly the DC you needed. Well, so I got a plus four, so it's sixteen. You got so. sixteen. So, uh, yeah, you can pretty much. You feel confident now that with following these tracks, you could probably find the lair. Cool. And you can also, uh, you can also determine that you it was most likely that the that um, their lair was uh, formerly the Albert. <laughs> oh. Sweet, they have new tenants. Uh, onward, my friends. Onward. In we go. And uh, I start walking away. Let's go. <laughs> Same. And hope you all follow me. Same order. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so you're front, I'm second, and then we got a T behind us. <laughs> okay. All right. So I keep trying to scroll on my software, and I realize I can't move the map on there. And I'm like, why the can I move it? Got it. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Loading. I did have a plan, by the way. To, I was—I know I was hiding in the tree, but I had a—I had a plan of attack if I forgot to. <clears throat> if y'all killed it before that happened. So as you guys start to uh, approach <laughs> where you think the lair uh, might be, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, declare some actions. Would you guys like to do anything before you get closer to the lair? Uh, can I do? I assume the, it's dark. Of course, if hey, buddy, did you uh, took a little damage? It, I see, eh? It's uh, it's still daylight. It's starting to get dark. Um, I uh, I would like to uh, sneak ahead and investigate the entrance if I can. I'm cool with that. Uh, I I did take some damage, and. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Kaim, if you have the ability to, without wasting any spells. I would hate for you to be disarmed. Um, I I have spells. Uh, 
the train. Do you happen to... Uh, okay, yeah, out of character. Uh, Nate, do you have uh, any kind of healing in your cantrips? Um, I got Spare the Dying, um, but As I don't a cantrip? Have... Yes. Okay. I've got... But that doesn't really... I mean, he's not... I've, I've got... Uh, lay on lay on hands myself, which is what I was just looking at. As a cantrip? Um, it's just a... Um, it's just an action. Yeah, just an action. Doesn't It doesn't seem to be a spell at all. So I could probably do that myself. Yeah, you probably should. Uh, uh, I'm double checking here. Oh, oh baby. Actually, that's just dark. Five. I, I'm resisting the urge just to go hello down the down the hallway. <laughs> hello, hello. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that lay on of hands and restore at least five of my hit points here. Okay. Okay. Did you already do it, Tim, or do you need me to? Uh, I took out of lay on of hands. I can add it. Or you can do it however you want. Okay. I'll add it. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. It's just easy. If, it, if it's easier for me to do it, that's fine. Um, so you're up to 31 out of 30 now. Correct. Damn. Guy's got HP. You know right. me. So, um, <laughs> uh, Welly, go ahead and make a stealth check for me. Bam. <clears throat> okay. Ooh. Ooh. He's okay. Yeah. So I'm going to say with the 16, that's going to give you the wherewithal to know that uh, you're sneaking into a sneaking close to a wolf's lair. And so you're also going to need to mask your smell. So you, oh. you take steps to do that as well. We just uh, rub the dead wolf leg on us. Yeah, I pull out the wolf leg and I give it to everybody and just go, here you go. Who's laughing at me now? (laughs) Uh, All of us, I think. (laughs) Rub some mud on. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Um, I don't don't know how much this we're supposed to see, DM, but is this... uh... From the tree line, it's possible to see a cave roughly 10 feet wide and 10 feet tall at the highest point set into a low cliff of gray stone. A thin plume of smoke appears to be coming from a point on the hill above the cliff, maybe 30 feet back from the cave entrance. Milling around the area are six wolves. Some are sat around the fire, some are seemingly working on improving a fence, and some are in process of process of tearing a sheep carcass apart. Many of the wolves appear to be wearing strips of brightly colored cloth or other decorations tied about limbs or their necks. It seems very peaceful and organized for a wolf den. Hmm. And we're hidden in the trees right now. I don't like peaceful. Um, if you if you want to get that close, I need all of you to make stealth checks. Right now, it's just Welly that's hidden in the bushes. I just put uh, you there for. Can, okay. can we assume we all put our Yep. Yeah. All Hoods are, yeah. Yeah. All right. Switch to advantage. Oh, hold on. I had to refresh everything because I lost connection again. Oh, but it didn't give me advantage. Mine will not okay. do advantage from the iPad for some reason. Yeah, mine's not either. All right. I got a 12 or a 16 then. Between my two rolls, twelve would be mine. Okay. Uh, what are rolling stealth checks? Yep. With advantage. With advantage. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to get my character sheet to pull up, and it's not cooperating right now. <clears throat> my, it's a it's a browser issue, not a not a character sheet issue. So give me a second here. There we go. Got it. Uh, stealth with advantage. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sorry. You good? Thirteen. Good. 
anybody roll under a 13? I had a 12. You had a 12. Okay. Because if, if you advance, they will definitely spot you. I see. Uh, I hear the cops after us, too. This is a weird, uh, this is a weird uh, cave. So... <laughs> Uh, you guys, this is what you see. You see, like, sort of a, uh, seemingly a, um, bunch of wolves sort of taking a patrol. There's a fire out front and smoke coming from 30 feet back from one of the cliffs. Presumably from, there's a campfire inside the cave as well. Wolves don't make fires. No. Uh... So, no, Willie, if you're going to, since you're stealth and you're sneaking, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oop. And uh, at advantage, because I've yes. got my, my hood on. Uh, advantage. Well, this is perception, so this is, but you can do oh, it at yeah. advantage because you're, cause you're stealth. <laughs> um, nothing. Okay. I All noticed right. nothing. All right. So you you're able to um, to get close, but you're not really uh, noticing. All right. You're kind of more focused. You're so focused on not being detected that you're not really catching any details. All right. Um, okay. Who wants to? Um, what time um, of day is it? Yeah, that's exactly it's, what I was... It's getting on. It's early evening. Uh, okay. Getting to... It's like the sun is starting to set. That's why these fires were... were going. Is that what this yellow circle is? That is the... Yes, yeah, so that's the um, aura representing fire. Okay. Um, very, very quietly, I whisper to the group and... And, and ask, I can, uh, I can make a sound at the entrance of the cave, and get them to see if they'll investigate inside. What do you think? I'm afraid if you make a sound at the entrance to the cave, that any inside may come investigate what's out. Oh boy! You see one of the wolves' ears perk, and it starts to sniff around. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe we lose arrows and then I charge out. Let's go. I knock you an hear. Arrow. Stop. You hear one of them say, "I smell something." Uh, so we can hear them now. Okay. The other two wolves nod in agreement and start to slowly. walk towards the bushes and two others sort of start to move back a bit. One of the one in the back that perked up says, you two check it out. We're going to go in and let the others know. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. I'm uh, confused about what I want to do. Uh, I am going to hold an attack. I'm going to hold a spell. Um, sorry, I've seen dice roll on my screen. I'm, I'm holding a spell. I'm gonna wanna, and if I see more than two at the mouth of the cave, I will release said spell. I would love to sneak attack one of these wolves. Now's your chance. I feel like at this one we're just waiting for something to pop yep. off. There's your chance. <laughs> There's sent. Uh, let's go ahead and if you guys want to, you guys are going to make an attack. I need to roll initiative, so I know the turn order. Are we attacking? Oh. 
shit. <laughs> Tim's not attacking. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, it's... Oh, I gotta hit the button first. Yeah. It's not selecting. You shouldn't have to do it if it, if you do it from the token. Yeah, I did. I, did. I just uh, I had yeah, the I wrong did. cursor. I did mine from the oh, token. Four. I got twenty four, whatever. But now I'm not showing up in the turn order. You're first. It's am I in the turn order? Yeah, you're first. Huh. I, don't, I don't see it in my turn order. Whatever. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. me neither. I don't either. All right. Whatever. Uh, yeah, you're up first. Well, Okay. Or wolf number six. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm holding. I'm holding a cloud of daggers. If two or more try to get in, to go back into the cave at the mouth of the cave. Okay. That's it. All right. Awesome. And then so next up is this wolf. It is. It is going to make a perception check. <laughs> Yay! And it doesn't send. Oh, it has advantage. My bad. It has advantage. Give me one more moment. Oh. <laughs> so it, like, ah. perked up and it was like. Uh, it's nothing, and then it kind of like started to go forward, and then went. Oh no! I heard something. It's going to turn and get closer. And I will say it's going to notice you guys at the twenty. At out intruders <sighs> well shit <laughs> it's go time boys <laughs> hey Tobion take off your armor <laughs> <laughs> sorry that, that okay was character, but um sounded funny <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we've lost the ad the uh, element of surprise, mm -hmm. uh, and they are now aware. Kosif, oh, you're up. All right, well, I'm going to <laughs> sorry move to here. Mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead and just lay out an attack on this wolf closest to me. Okay. Ooh, the okay. Ooh. Yeah. Roll damage. Nine. Nine. Okay. Nine. You hit and hit brutally. It is very hurt. And the wolf goes. The wolf uh, shouts in pain. Is there, I found them. They're here. And uh, <coughs> the, the rest start to howl. You hear a lot more wolves howling, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I think we done pissed them off. Okay, so is, uh, is that in your turn? Uh, I think it does, yeah. Okay. Well, you're up. Uh, it's not my turn. Yeah, I was gonna say it's me. Yeah. Uh, Tirebeard. I have well, I I got fourteen point five. Fourteen point one five and I have Tor well, is fourteen point fourteen. On, on, yeah, I've well, got well he's got a seven point one five on ours. Yeah, I, I rolled a seven. Mine shows uh, Keegan next. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know what you guys are looking at. I have Cam is 20.18. I have Wolf 7, 18.15. Kosif, 17.14. Welly, 14.15. Mm -hmm. Then Torbjorn, 14.14. 14. And Kosif, you're in there again. 
All right. Yeah, Willie had a 7.1 okay. on ours. We're, stop. We're just going to re-roll initiative. Yeah, that was weird. Okay. I, I didn't have half of people in there either. So go ahead and roll initiative. But we roll it with advantage as well, right? No. You don't roll initiative with it. There we go. Everybody's showing up now. Wow, that was so much worse. It didn't it was the same, really. Yeah, it really didn't change much. How many wolves are there? I keep extending it because I keep doing keep going. <laughs> And the ones that are in initiative are done. Uh, descending. All right. So. All right, Kaim, you're up. <clears throat> okay. Um, shit. Yeah. Same thing. Um, I'm going to undo that attack, by the way. <laughs> So we're we're back to back to the top like this all didn't happen. Yep. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Um, so Kaim, you're up first. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, okay. Make sure my mic was on. Sorry. Uh, I'm gonna make sure. Uh, I'm same exact action. I'm gonna hold cloud of daggers if I see two or more at that mouth of the entrance right here, right there. I'll, I'll, I'll put down cloud of daggers right there if two or more come in. Okay. And I'll back up. Well, no, I'll stay. I'll hold ground. And then um, bonus action, I will cast um, Kosa if you're up next, right? Yeah. So yeah. I will cast... Crap, where's my character sheet? Uh, as a bonus action, my, uh, my bardic inspiration on you. And I would pull out a guitar, but let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what does the bardic inspiration give me? Uh, on uh, any D6. ability check, an, an extra d6. You can choose to roll it before or after your roll. You just have to do it in the next ten minutes, which is, you know, this entire combat round plus some. Are attacks aren't abilities, so are they? Technically, no. Okay. But. Okay. Um, so at this point, we've backed up. We've retconned to the point that they haven't found us yet, right? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. Uh, does is Wolf Four supposed to go before me at this point? Uh, yes. So let me. Sorry. Roll perception. Let's go. Ahead. At advantage, and it still doesn't. Oh. Okay, so you guys did not uh, get detected this time. You can, oh. sorry, uh, just it, it does work on one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Not on the damage part, but on the attack roll. On the attack roll. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, <clears throat> I could charge. I mean, you've got your two loud <laughs> attackers next, followed by um, more wolves. Uh, I say we go out there and we take their attention. Not a bad idea. All okay, right. Smith. So I'm going to come up to Wolf 7 like I did the first time. Okay. Um, there we are. And I will uh, attack... <laughs> My longsword, and let's hope for the same. I got a 14. 14 hits. All right, give me a 9, at least. 11. I'll take wow. it. Woo. Nice. He drops unconscious. <laughs> the, uh, the wolf goes down, and upon seeing this, the... Uh, the wolves start to ch chant. Foot bolt and flame. <laughs> and that is that end your turn? That ends my turn. Okay, Torbjorn, you're up. Uh, I am going to move my little butt. Let me get make sure I get the move thing and not the measure tool going on here. My little butt up here. 
I am going to swing my silver light at that bad son of a bitch. Four. Oh. Oh, 26. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay. I, I assume that hits. Uh, Is that a safe assumption? Yes. <laughs> Four. Eight, eight points of slash. Eight so eight you're, you hit five. Uh, this, the, 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 this one. Yes? Yeah. Yep, hit the one right in front of me. Okay. Eight slash. No, I hit... Is that the one right in front of me? I can't tell my things pulled up. This one right yeah. here. Yeah. All right, you slash at it, and uh, it. You hear it instead of making a, a wolf yelp. You hear it go ah, like audibly, like a like as if it was, a human. And uh, at gotcha. this point, you see, before our next turn, because it beats you in initiative, flame. A giant dire wolf at the the uh, mouth of the cave yell, Stop! Well, uh, who, might ar- who might argue? <laughs> then you see another one uh, close behind. And they're going to hold their action to see what you guys... They do not like it. Look happy. So, with that happening, I am the going wolves. to spend a superior. Oh. Uh, and the wolves will stop. And I will not cast daggers after hearing common speech. Okay. Because they that that would have been my my reaction right there. So I'm gonna hold. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a, a superiority die on uh, and use maneuvering attack. So, when I hit a creature with a weapon attack and you spend one superiority die to maneuver one of your comrades into a more advantageous position, you and the superiority die, you what you add superiority superiority die to the attack's damage roll and you choose a friendly creature who can see or hear you. That creature can use a reaction to move up to half its speed without provoking opportunity of attacks. We get all that. So we're stopping combat. If oh. unless you're gonna re engage. Are you re engaging combat? No. Okay. I thought I thought this thing was gonna re engage or was gonna engage. Never mind then. I will, right. So no, I, I will not use that. I will step forward into the light. You see two giant wolves called by the others as flame and bolt emerge from the cave, one wreathed in lightning and the other one in flame. Great wolves. I have never encountered your kind before to hear you speak with such clarity and wisdom. What is going on here? Bolt says, Why do you humans come to our home? an attack so brazenly killing our family members in front of our children. We were sent by the town. They have feared your kind and they have suffered greatly at the hands of, well, wolves. I do not know if these were your family. We, I apologize. This is what what you are is is beyond comprehension. Well, this all began when we attacked the Lightbringer for coming into our territory. He... There was a mighty flash, and suddenly we were not as we were. Were you once human, or have you always been a wolf? We were a pack of wolves who minded our own business until we were encroached upon by you humans. Then, when we defended ourselves, we found ourselves granted this gift. A 
of common speech and the ability to use tools. So knowledge has been bestowed upon you. And more. There. As, as lightning crackled around. There are many beautiful and strange things in this world, but I have never encountered your kind before. And I am awestruck. And I apologize. Flame behind him, the the fires that wreathe around him going brighter and brighter as you speak. Why are you negotiating with our food? And says, we are not as we were and must be better. I believe that we can come to an agreement. This town that you surround they have food and honestly with what you have become there are people that would worship you as gods and for your protection I believe that they would feed you and clothe you and help you I believe we could do that Make a persuasion check. Okay. Does anybody want to assist him and give him advantage? Uh, sure, sir. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I need the advantage. <laughs> Take it anyway. You might get a natural. Good point. Hey! <laughs> wow. Just a few wow. words of wisdom. <laughs> wow. You can see your words are getting through Bolt, and Bolt is liking everything you that you're saying. Uh, and as as he um, sort of, you can see that he's that the crackling has subsided a great deal, and he's becoming uh, very agreeable. And as about as he's about to uh, accept your gracious uh, offer of uh, becoming uh, the liaison of diplomacy between you and the town, flame shouts, "Coward!" and pounces on Bolt. I immediately... and he makes a surprise attack. Oh wow! Surprise attack on Bolt. And I just want to get. Second. Yeah, what was that? You get out there. Okay, Bolt uh, or Flame attack Bolt. Are you guys going to intervene? Because we'll I'm, need to. I'm going to shout out to to Bolt and ask Bolt, do you want help? We are here for your help. I'm just going to intervene. Okay. Yeah. All right, everyone, roll initiative. Shit, man. Um, Ooh. seeing this. Well, seeing this, uh, do do the Cubs, for a lack of a better term, in this situation. The Cubs. Oh, look at that. Everyone, oh, they, all the wolves are confused. They don't. They don't know what to make of what just happened. So they are gonna not. They don't seem to be making any moves. Okay. Unless you do. So it looks like uh, we've got what first. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So uh, so we're want to intervene to get flame off of them, correct? Mm -hmm. cool. Flame okay. clearly uh, just attacked oh, Bolt and missed. Like Bolt yeah. just got out of the way and looked shocked. <laughs> um, so I'm no going intended. to uh, <laughs> take a, uh, a sneaky five step foot or five foot step to the side so I can aim directly at Flame uh, and hit him with a sneak attack. Well, uh, so, so I got to ro roll stealth first. Mm hmm. 
16, okay. And then... You're going to uh, roll against perception. Roll against perception? Um, against its perception. Oh, okay. Which it fails, so you're hidden. <laughs> okay. Uh, and sneak attack. Chip chow. That is a hit. Uh, roll damage. Oh. <laughs> 15 points of damage. You see your bolt fly and do and and strike true uh, as the um, the uh, bolt hits its target the the uh, bolt seems to catch fire and and uh, disintegrate instantly as the rage and flame grows great cool. and you did uh, do damage okay well cool. <laughs> uh, alrighty uh, I am going to uh, hold right here and stay nice and hidden and I'll end my turn okay and it looks like Ara, you're up. Okay. Um. Here is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna piss him off more. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna move into position here first. So. I'm gonna move over here by Torbjorn. And. What I'm going to do is cast a uh, spell on Torbjorn of this guy right here. Okay. Which is protection from right good there. and evil. Uh, can you see that there, Keegan? Yeah. Until spell ends. Cool. So I have to concentrate on that. Now, can I do a cantrip um, even though I have that spell going? As yes. Or is that going to break the okay. base? Can't well, break. right. As long as it's not a, another concentration. Um, so, which is tough. So really what you want to do is you want to do your bonus action, then action. Okay. So I'll sure. let you retcon that because you're learning. Um, well, I want to do Sacred Flame just for the... So I'm going to do this, and then I could do Protection from Good and Evil then, right? Okay. So yep. I'm going to do that guy right there. Okay, so it needs to make a Dexterity saving throw. Which oh. it does... Oof. Yeah, he definitely does. Okay. I just pissed and, him off even more. And uh, the so your spell attack seems to actually, even though it would be normally, believe it. Is it halved if you miss, or is it just miss? I think it's halved. Either way, it takes no damage. Okay. Well, Flame uh, seems to be resistant to flame. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um it was worth a shot. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna be in a defensive stance uh came kime kime you're off. Okay. Yep. At this point I immediately I just look at uh, what's the, 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 the thunder guy? What's his name? Bold. Bold. Okay. Bold, we do not wish to harm anybody. Do not see this as an act of aggression, and I'm going to cast Sleep at about this area. It's got a 20-foot range, so I'm just trying to catch um, Flame, and it's going to put the, the Cubs to sleep over here, I think, if it hits them. So, uh, Sleep. Where'd it go? Um, cast that at level 1. So you cast sleep. Mm -hmm. And 
what's the uh sorry what how does it can you pull up the thing or no um i don't know how to make it just pop sleep into the see if i click on that nope just here hold on uh so what does it do it's a lot harder on the d-pad or on the ipad let me just here sleep so uh the spell sends creatures into a magical slumber roll 5d8 the total is how many oh, hit yeah. points of creatures the spell can affect creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range are affected in ascending order of their current hit points ignoring unconscious creatures Okay. So, what is it? Sixty feet of your choice, or yeah. okay? So I'm kind of casting it on the outside so it doesn't touch bolt. Casting it kind of out here, so that way it, it hits flame and it'll hit wolf five and wolf. Okay. Uh, what's the save on it? Uh, let me pull that back up. Um, it's the save is it's your it's your save. Uh, yes. No, what's well, your it's your spell DC? What's your spell DC? Oh, uh, core spell fifteen. Yep, it's fifteen. It saves. Fuck. Flame is still up. Okay. Uh, what about? Yeah, I don't. Want... Did you lock the door? Uh, the and uh, let's see. Huh. So, uh, the one that was hurt ha is now asleep. Okay. Which one was that? Wolf four. I'm I'm gonna mark it here in a second. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, there. Nice. <laughs> and then I guess as a my character will not want to hurt flame unless you mean bolt. Uh, I know I I don't I don't. That's why I tried to cast sleep on flame. I didn't want to. Yeah, he doesn't want to hurt him. I want a bolt to make that decision, not us. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will, I will stay right there. I'm done. <clears throat> okay. And it looks like Kos, if you're up. Oh, DM question is: uh, Does Kos still have uh, Bardic Inspiration? Has it been more than ten minutes? It is not. Okay. Oh, good, because I'm going to come up here in front of Flame. Okay. And, and I think I'm going to try this. Very thundery out. Uh, exactly, because I'm going to cast Thunderous Smite. That's <laughs> uh, my bonus action. Um, so the okay. first time I hit with a melee weapon attack during this spell's duration, my weapon rings with thunder that is audible within 300 feet of me, and the attack deals an extra 2d6 thunder damage to the target. Additionally, if the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 10 feet away from me and knocked prone. Okay. Um, so I'm casting that, and then I'm going to go ahead and attack... And uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. And, it's probably appropriate for me to say I'm going to go ahead and use Bardic Inspiration. Um, okay. Before I make the attack, I would assume. So. You can choose. It, it doesn't before. matter. You can do it either. Can, yeah, you can do before or after. Uh, okay. Well, uh, well, fifteen. Fifteen hits. Okay. And then we do the damage for the longsword. Okay. And, and then, then I add two d six. So I'll go ahead and add the 11 now. I'll take the 11 out of the way now. Uh, do you want me to roll the 2d6 for you? I uh, just, got, just about got it. Okay. 2d6. 11. 11. So another 11 points. Ooh, wow. wow. Dang. I feel like flame's hurting. Now, I believe that he qualifies as a creature unless you're telling me otherwise. Correct. So it needs and to do so a he needs to strength make... saving throw. 
Man, you're fucking them up. And what's the save? I uh, got a, a 17. It's a strength saving throw. Um, I don't know what he's rolling against if it's a strength saving throw. Uh, it's your spell DC. Spell DC is probably less than that. Uh, 12, so yeah. 12, okay. All right, so it saves from that, but it took monstrous damage. Ha, ha, and he looks ha, upset. Ha. Yeah, you piss him off right before my turn. Thanks. Where's the spell okay. DC on our <laughs> character sheet? It's, it's in your spell. Go to your spell section. It's at the top. Oh, derp. Thanks. Um, okay, so it is Lame's turn. And starting to realize that uh, the pack is not going to take a side and that uh, it's getting a ganged up on flame ignites fire breath Ugh. so 15 foot cone let's see I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in that oh you guys are right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that would be Ara, Torbjorn, and Osef I only rolled a 5 you must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw. All right. So dexterity save. I would need some shoes. 18. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. 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 Uh, that's. Hey, you guys told me not to use that 1d6 the last time. So uh, how about I use it now? <laughs> yeah. Now's your chance. Now's your time. Yeah. Where is dexterity? Uh, Dex it's a dexterity save. So it'll be a, uh, right next to dexterity. Yeah. That top box. Oh, okay. That was oh, a you got a oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> my song sucked. I'm sorry. So. Oh, the train too. Right. Oh my so God. It was in your song. It's just I didn't get it. You know? so, oh. I already rolled a natural one. Yikes. Okay. Well. Um, wow. Was I in that cone? That didn't... Was I out? Mm. I think you're just outside. I think you're just far okay. away. By what was it, fifteen foot? Yeah, you're mm -hmm. twenty-five feet. Or you're twenty feet. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're not inside, Whoop. but the rest Whoops. of us were. were... Whoop. 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 <laughs> okay, so uh, eight points of damage to um, those who failed. Four points to uh, those who saved. So cool. Okay. I'm going to take mine down. Yeah, four points for you, Torb. Eight for Kosef and Ara. Which I, I'll go ahead and mark. Awesome. Thank you. And it's me. Unless All Tim right. wants to do and anything else, but I don't think Tim can do anything else. That is going to be uh, Flame's turn. Uh, so next is... My my two my four point one four. Uh, <laughs> hey, you I'm still get to go before Bolt. <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna step up here. <clears throat> I'm gonna swing my silver light and hit this fucker. Hopefully, and that was a hit. I a hit. And you rolled a nineteen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Seven. And seven points. Damage. Okay, you hit uh, flame and flame. Uh, is looking really bad now. I must Plain. say, Torbjorn, you're much more impressive with a hammer than you are with a tree. <laughs> or your armor. Uh, yeah. I also, as a bonus action, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, hey, uh, Kosef, fuck you, but here you go. <laughs> um, I put Rally onto Kosef as my bonus action, uh, so what? if you want to see what that does, there you go. But... It's a bonus action. Uh, you get a hit. You get temporary hit points that are my superiority die plus my charisma, which charisma is zero. So I just got to roll superiority die. Cool. So you get this many hit points extra. Two. 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 Your two extra hit points. Two extra hit points. <laughs> nice. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> hey Keegan, remember you get uh, protection for good and evil. Yes. Okay. That sounds like a video game. That takes uh, it. I think that's all I can do. Okay. 
So that uh, that makes it Bolt's turn. Bolt is going to bite at flame with a nine and miss. Come on, Bolt. Bolt kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do we have flame on our team? Maybe back at the wrong wolf here. Yeah. Bolt yeah. could have cast lightning on you, but it would have hit two uh, possible allies, so it held back. <laughs> He's a good dog, that bolt. Fair. <laughs> you go up and just pet him. <laughs> good boy. Uh, cool. We're back at the top then? Yeah. So we're back to Ara. Your Ara. turn. Oh, it's me. Oh. Um, didn't realize I that. think I was just skipped. Because I had a 22, oh. 15. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. The what yeah. the hell? Least, How did that move? Down the bottom. Moved down down the bottom. Down the bottom. There you go. I don't know. There you go. Sorry. Wellie. 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 Your turn. Yeah. Send our wellies, send our wellies. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna move right here huh? well. uh, with an actual mover. And then, <laughs> because this is this way, I should be able to hit him with yep. my... Cool. So I'm going to roll, and it's this just, is... Actually, you even get advantage because a... uh, of uh, flanks. It's being flanked by... Several enemies now, so <laughs> I'll give you cool. advantage on that attack. All right, and attack! Hey, twenty-two. <laughs> twenty-two hits. Nice. Yay! And it shaped your booty. Roll damage. Yep. Roll that damage. Roll and that six. All okay. right. With the, with the you're firing your crossbow at bolt at flame. Flame goes down. Yay! Oh. Uh, <laughs> don't celebrate yet. Oh, opposite reactions. Yeah. Aww. Hey, Torbjorn, grab his leg. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. That would be Let's absolutely do. disrespectful. I, I agree. I pull out my sword and I go up to it and I pull back. <laughs> By the gods. <laughs> All right. I don't want Paul um, to be pissed off at us. That, it, that was his companion. So, uh,. I'll, we can finish out this round of, of uh, combat, but basically, uh, with flame down, Bolt is uh, not going to attack. I immediately rush over to Bolt and soothe the poor and try to try to wake it from its slumber gently. Okay, risking being bitten worth it. Uh, you wake it. It re- actually, sorry. in its rest, recovered uh, two hit points. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so, um, is Wolf Number Seven still unconscious? Wolf Seven is dead. Yeah. Um, I could down. spare the dying. Sorry. <laughs> I is could it, do that. Is it dead or is it unconscious? Yeah. Uh, I think he said he was unconscious. The touch of a living. Let's see. How long, how long ago? How was long that? ago was that? Because <laughs> well, I, I, I ran yeah. out and killed him on the first round. strike. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was before Bolt and Flame came out, so it's yeah. been too long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It would have failed saving okay. throws. I just wanted to make sure. So. Okay, so um, Bolt uh, ceases attack and uh, and regards you and says, "Thank you for your assistance." I fear he was too far gone to listen to reason. I hoped for I uh, I hoped for better. Oh, go ahead. We tried to tried to sleep him. To put him down so that you could help make more rational choices. I am I'm very sorry. Only a matter of time. Flame is hot headed. <laughs> I uh Oh my god. I asked I asked Bolt. I go uh uh Bolt, on the on the way to you we saw a uh an owl bear. Um do you, did you guys uh did you guys attack it? What what happened there? We saw it entered on the way out here. 
The owl bear had sought refuge in this cave. He fit to fit our tribe, so we moved in and evicted said owl bear. He will no longer be right. an issue. We dispatched of the creature. Mm-hmm. I imagine the owl bear is carcass is still there and may provide some uh, well needed uh, meat that then you don't have to take from the sheep herders. If your pups are hungry, there's food from them. Show them, tall girl, and you've got the leg. I was going to say, I pull out the, the leg out of my bag and I go, Oh, man. <laughs> Does Doggy want a treat? Doggy want a treat? <laughs> You're the worst. Um, I want to I wanna pull Kaim aside and, uh, and talk to him for a minute and just say uh, I I like your plan I like this idea and I appreciate that Bolt has chosen his better nature but how confident are you that the men who are so concerned with profit are going to stand to have these wolves stay out here in this land when they see the protection that these wolves could provide I believe that they would make the correct choice. And I pull out, I ask, uh, the call, 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 on. Coral? Coral. 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 Steps out of the bushes, scared out of his mind. (laughs) Coral. You know the town folk better than we do. You see these creatures and the gift that they have been given. You see that they willing to sacrifice one of them for the lives of their children. Would you and your families not do the same? I I had no idea these wolves were intelligent. Of course, I would. I would use my position in the council to see uh, that we could make such an arrangement. However, Tilius might need some persuasion Uh, if you would return back with me and assist me with that I believe we could probably come to some sort of reasonable arrangement I'm sure it won't be an issue I'm sure Torbjorn has a leg up on the competition (laughs) (laughs) Uh, by the way, I gave the leg to the the wolf that Bertrand or that sorry that uh, that time put to sleep to give him some food and again just kind of comfort him like hey we didn't mean this okay in the but I want to point out not the wolf leg it was the owl bear yeah leg. please don't give him the wolf I don't leg wanna, I don't want to give him the wolf leg <laughs> in the just, uh, just for clarity in the interest of uh, brevity because we basically com- completed the module with the exception of going back. Uh, let's cut back to, to uh, the, bar. the meeting and uh, see what we can do to negotiate uh, for them and finish up the uh, the adventure for the evening. The meeting? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm just on a little little roll here. Uh, little sorry. roll? Bread? Little roll? Yeah, bread. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, he got That's it. That's a throwback, by the way, to one shot we ran. Tim had a, Tim had a, a lot of bread going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, for any viewers in our uh, gameplay of this, there was lots of jokes of bread. Last time. For the sake of Mary bread and bean? bakery. <laughs> bread. Uh... <laughs> Let's stop loafing around. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Let's wrap it up. It's getting late. Yes. <laughs> you guys want the extra leg on that one. <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> uh, the DM will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning strikes, but only, but only on the truth. Oh, <laughs> so you come back, uh, and Coral uh, presents this to the council, and Tilly is not happy. 
he was expecting dead wolves and uh, problem solved, not uh, having to uh, share now with wolves uh, his profits and uh, his uh, his uh, you know livelihood. However, uh, I feel like maybe uh, one of your wasive uh, members might be able to get him to agree. I'm, I'm, uh, pretty, well, I'm pretty, pretty persuasive. persuasive. Uh, okay. I'm not. I'd, I'd like to make this attempt if, if uh, somebody will assist me. I will assist. Okay. Roll persuasion with advantage. Persuasion with advantage. Oh yeah, my advantage isn't working, so I'll just do it twice. Stop it. <laughs> can't scroll. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, oh that's sorry, pretty Dad. decent. Whoa. Hey, yeah. you get a natural 20. Okay. Oh, uh, nope. Never mind. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say to, uh, I want to say to him, Tilius, Tilius, a wise man once told me that it is not our nature that determines who we are, but it is we who determine our nature. And I believe that these wolves have made a determination that it is in their best interest to protect you and to live as one with you. And I would hope that you would make the same determination to have a similar nature as these kind creatures. Tillis takes a puff of his pipe, thinks for a moment. He says, well, I am a businessman after all. And I see the value in a pack of magical wolves to defend us. They are willing to stick to the bargain. Well, then, I suppose it's a small price to pay. Speaking of small prices. <laughs> yeah, pay up. <laughs> you missed the slice of the bounty. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on completing the Wolves of Welt. Woo! Woo! You uh, you get the benefit of another night and uh, endless food and drinks from uh, the uh, Crooked Shepherd, and also the eight hundred gold that you were promised, plus a two extra two hundred uh, that was persuaded by Coral, uh, much to Ooh. Tilius's uh, protests. Uh, so you you all may divide a thousand gold between the five of. You. Was that two hundred a piece? Two hundred. Indeed. Say, are are we uh, divided two hundred a piece? No, you can start a party fund if you like, or you know keep it amongst yourselves. Whatever you decide. I think we could manage separate bank accounts for now. Okay. I agree. <laughs> Give it time. We'll be. I, uh, I hadn't got to know you well enough to open a joint account yet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I would personally also like to donate 25 of that, of mine, to uh, to the temple. Okay. Uh, that- Father Merrickson uh, happily uh, agrees and uh, also uh, offers healing uh, to any wounded members so you all uh, may restore your hip. Yay. Uh, is... Uh, fuck. What's her name? Lenora. Lenora. Mm-hmm. I'm a. I'm a. I'm gonna give her uh, eight gold for again hospitality. Okay. Mark that off your uh, yep. inventory. So. I also like even numbers. <laughs> so. <laughs> you guys enjoy a a night full of celebration and. Uh, joyous uproar in the town hailed as heroes at this point one one thing for we end david hmm? lenora said we would talk about me buying a bottle of whiskey honey yeah so lenora I, I get as you leave lenora uh says uh gives you a hug and as as she pulls away slips uh, a, a bottle of whiskey honey uh into your pouch and says Bless you, dear. Thank you for all your work. 
Good luck with your family. Why, well, thank you. I, uh, I owe you a lot. You've, you've taken us in uh, during our little during our time here, and you've been nothing but hospitable to us. But he gave it to me. The um, so, so yeah. add a, a bottle of whiskey, honey, to your inventory. Yep. Is that, uh... It values one hundred pot. So do I add that? Oh, I guess I can just put that in the notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Is there anything anybody would like to do? I it? will finish the night off with a song, people. Another okay. night with I... a song of rest. I just want to go to the nearest shop that may have arrows and purchase a few. Okay. I don't think I have I have go. any needs myself. I'm sorry. I go to bed. All right. I'm just going to dance on the table. Okay. She is a foolish elf. Yep. <laughs> Alright. So morning comes, and uh, you begin your trek back to uh, the town. Well, actually, where do you want, where do you guys want to go? Um, head back to the, where we began. Okay. Is that, is that the consensus with everyone? Yes. I'm cool with it. Yep. Okay. As you guys start to head back to town, I mean, yeah, back to your the original town, and you're riding riding your uh, horses. There's an unusual fog. More, the mists seem to be closing in a lot closer than uh, normal for uh, this time of day on the mountains. Uh, usually, the mist dissipates as the uh, as the heat goes on, but this seems to be an unnatural mist in the area. And, uh, that's where we're going to close tonight's game. Oh my. <laughs> and the mists. Stay tuned for next episode where we figure out what the mist is. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I do want to have a couple shout outs uh, before we, we close the stream here um thank you guys to anybody who's watching on twitch live this will be up on our youtube channel if you go to youtube.com slash level two gaming that's l-e-v-e-l-t-w-o-g-a-m-i-n-g it's a lot of letters uh go there you can also go to save by the roll.com i'm gonna have links to everything there uh, once we get everything uh exported and uploaded on youtube it might take a couple days for it to go up there um but thank you guys so much for hanging out it was a fun night thank you to these lovely folk that joined us on this adventure and there's many more to come um, we're hoping to do this, uh, we want to do at least once a month. We're trying to do two a month for this adventure. Keep it going. So that's the goal. Um, follow us on Twitter at Save by the Roll TV. Uh, that's the best place to, to get information on uh, when we're going to go live and what adventures we have coming up and fun stuff. So do you guys have anything you want to shout out or anything you want to do before we close this night up of this lovely adventure? Um... Eat turkey and chicken legs? And wolf legs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just so everyone's aware, uh, the next uh, session we have is going to begin our journey into Barovia to begin the Curse of Straw. Mm. The yeah. full campaign. Mm -hmm. The so. full campaign. Um, uh, you could follow each of us. Well, first of all, follow the uh, the Lever Two Gamers um, Twitter. Do we have a Lever Two Gamers STL? Do we have a, um, a, a sorry, an Instagram or anything? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Instagram. Everything is saved by the roll TV. Okay, so check that out there. And if you go to save, follow each. If of you us. go to save by the roll dot com, you can find all the links. They'll put them all there. Cool. That'll be the hub. And yeah, you can keep keep up with uh, keep up with me. I'll be releasing. Uh, that, all the music you heard tonight is actually available on iTunes right now. Um, and if anybody is interested in using the music for their own uh, their own campaigns, I will be donating uh, and giving full access and free license to use it on your show. I'll send you a Dropbox link and for the first 10 people that uh, want to download that and f use it for free license on their own campaigns and their own homes or even on their own streaming shows. You are more than welcome, just email us and uh, we'll get that over to you. Cool. Awesome. 
Anybody else? Nope. Cool. Well, I'm going to end this like I end everything else. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for a wonderful night. And as always, welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level. Bye. I love you all. I can't wait to probably get murdered and stressed. <laughs>